everyone. Sandra all the time is here with the cold heart truth. She's the ears and the eyes for me and you. Every day, everyone want to hear from Sandra. And every time on the air, she's getting better. So tell your sister, tell your brother, tell your mama, call Sandra in the morning and in the evening. They always call him, call him Sandra. And when they start fighting, they call him Sandra. And it That's right, folks. Everyone is telling their mama about the cold hard truth. Welcome to another episode with more truth telling, more problem solving, and of course, more tea spilling than ever before. Sit back, students, grab your tea and turn up the volume because class is now in session. Call in at 936 2626 because your voice matters. Share your opinion on issues that matter the most to you. All right, folks. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Cool Hard Truth. Let's go ahead and check in with uh, 106, Blake and Aaron, see what they're up to this Most morning. sunny skies, calm winds tomorrow for Ash Wednesday, also for Valentine's Day, mm-hmm. partly mm-hmm. sunny skies and uh, low chance of rain. It's uh, Fat Tuesday today, and I um, I blew it because... I was going to get pancakes. I, I, I know I blew it. I too. was counting on you. We know that's <laughs> it's not a good option. <laughs> the count on it's you? the worst option out of every option available. Happy Mardi Gras, Sandy. Yes, hello. I got uh, some. I got some beads, Sandy. <laughs> Shrove, Shrove Tuesday. It's Pancake Tuesday. Yep. Fat Tuesday. Um, All those fun things. Good morning, things. Sandy. Yeah, um, we were jamming out to your song. I, I'm I'm ready for the holiday tomorrow. I got my stash of goodies to give away in the show this morning. Oh, nice. Valentine's Day. Excellent. Lots of chocolate. Are we ready for news? We are. Quick shout out on on your platforms. Just want to say happy mm-hmm. birthday again to my wife. It's a big oh, four today. Yeah, happy birthday, Jamie. Jamie. Happy birthday, Jamie. We've got some All fun right. plans for later on, hopefully. We do. We've got a little present for her right here. Oh, that's nice. We're there. doing uh, what could we're, it be? we're doing his and hers petties at Get Nailed and More today. Yeah. Nice. And then and then a little lunch and then a dinner tonight. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. All right. right. All stuff. Uh, well, um, breaking news. Baby number two coming for Blake. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, the, the shop <laughs> <closed. laughs> The factory's closed. closed. All righty, oh, folks. Right, we'll get to some news. Big news. <laughs> <laughs> some important news for you. Interesting news. It's Blake and Darren's Spilling the Tea with Sandy. K-Man's top news headlines of the day from CMR. I'm married, by the way. That kind of thing doesn't happen anymore. Come on. <laughs> For Jamie's birthday, she gets to do the snap. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty sure right, we won't be morning. anywhere near that area. <laughs> Tired. <laughs> oh, my God. too much. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, folks. Good morning. Good Headlines morning. this beautiful Tuesday morning. Fat Tuesday. Her birthday, her birthday, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> Include the fact that um, a visiting justice has arrived on island and he's going to preside over the trial of McKeeva Bush. A visiting yeah. judge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In a very unusual um, move, it has been announced that the Honorable Justice Stanley H.W. John has been appointed by the governor on the advice of the Judicial, judicial and Legal Services Council, Commission, my apologies, to preside over the trial of the Honorable McKeeva Bush, which is scheduled to commence on February the 19th. Interesting. Well, why, mm-hmm. why do you think uh, there was that move? Hmm. We'll be talking about it a little bit later on. You think maybe just because of some backlash or something uh, like that? Just to make sure that justice is blind. Got it. Yeah. Okay. There's a new flying club that has opened its doors to aviation in the Cayman Islands. This is fun and exciting if you're interested. Lots and lots of kids are excited about this. Um, so go check it out. The Cayman Islands Flying, flying Club officially launched as a nonprofit. Uh, the club's initiative is to promote and advance general aviation within the Cayman Islands. 
uh, they say, making flying better. So it marked the occasion with a series of inaugural events that included uh, meet and greets and socials and a fly-in and uh, a static aircraft display event. Lots of demonstration flights, which were also open to the public. So if you'd like some more about this, uh, go check it out. I'm sure they're on social media, Cayman Islands Flying, Flying Club. So do check them out. They've got a really cool um, video as well that you can watch to learn more about them. All, All right. right, East End Primary School. Their um, school nursery has officially opened. So this is good news for the good folks in East End. Um, it opened last Wednesday with a brief ceremony. The new facility, which commenced operation in August of 2023, currently has 17 three-year-olds enrolled, and it features a play-based curriculum, morning and afternoon programs, and daily free meals. So the uh, Ministry of Education welcomed guests, emphasizing the long-held goal of fostering young minds in the East and North Side districts. So if, you've, uh, if you live in that district and you need some help with, you know, preschool services, nursery services, please go and check this out. Hopefully they've got more space available. There was no one before? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, okay. kind of crazy. Yeah. All right. The um, Department of Environment is saying that coastal setback lines are necessary in light of the recent flooding event that happened with the Norwester last week. Um, they say that it's their sincere hope that the Ministry of Sustainability and Climate Resilience will um, propose a fixed coastal setback reference line along Seven Mile Beach based on long-term scientific data. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't hold your breath, DOE, because it looks like this government is hell-bent on doing the opposite when it comes to the environment. But we'll see. Hmm. All right. Congratulations. Final story of the day. Congratulations to the Heart Warriors and Angels. Uh, They had a beach walk over the weekend and they have raised um, on Sunday, February the 11th. They have raised more than $27,000 to help support families dealing with congenital heart defects. This is a fantastic story. And this is their annual, their sixth annual um, beach walk event. And it was held at the picturesque Seven Mile Beach. Uh, And it was held in memory of little baby Nolan. You guys might might remember him. Baby Nolan Evans. Um, who passed away due to a congenital heart disease and over 300 participants joined uh, the family and pet friendly walk. So congrats to them. Cool. All right. That's what I got for you this beautiful Tuesday morning, folks. Enjoy your day off. Thank you. I'll see you guys Thursday. Yep. Are you going to the ag show? Eh, I'm still thinking about it. Okay. Yeah. No, normally I go, but boy, when I think about the traffic sometimes, mm. and I literally live Probably within walk-in-ish distance, but yeah, sometimes like the traffic is. She get like yeah. a scooter and scoot over there. Oh, like taking, a scooter, taking your life in your hands, being out on these roads. Yeah, but yeah, scooter, I mean, you, could be, you could zip yeah. over there in five minutes. It'd be fun. Yeah, maybe I'll think about it. All, All right, right, guys, have a good one. Right. See you on Enjoy. Thursday. Goodbye. All righty. So, good morning, everyone. Happy, happy. Uh, I was going to say Hump Day Wednesday, but that's going to be tomorrow. This is Medical Rundown Tuesday. Lots and lots of fun. So um, you guys know the score already. Um, Shamari, unfortunately, his team did not make it. However, um, I heard, a little birdie told me, that Shamari was still having a party. I'm like, I'm going to report him to the, the Dolphins people over there in Miami. Shamari, can you please explain why you had a party on Super Bowl Sunday and you had music pumping in the neighborhood and you had an a la kebab truck and you had the big screen in the yard? <laughs> well, Sandy, you see, I already know who that hater is. Um, that has to be Johan, who is reporting stuff to you. Well, because, funny enough, you know, I was in the neighborhood and I drove by. I was uh, tempted to uh, 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 I think that was Johan because he, he, was, he was blowing up the spot in the... In the group chat as well for the neighborhood, even <laughs> though he even though he invited himself over, right? Oh my gosh! You know? No way! But yeah, every year, every year, big every year. Big yeah, year. I was I was Super tempted Bowl. to um, I was actually tempted to pop in. To be honest, um, as I drove by, I saw people parking up and down the street, and I said, "Well, I don't really have an invitation, an <laughs> open I invite party." Hey, but it looked like you were having a fun time. Yeah, man. So every year, every year for the Super Bowl, you know, have a group of people over. We watch the Super Bowl. You choose your team at the door, 
when the other team um, scores, then there's a ritual you have to do. So, you know, that it, that involves, um, for those that don't drink, it involves grape juice. From those that do drink, it involves something a little bit stronger, you know, <laughs> from sorrel with a hint of something else. Uh, my mother's sorrel that everybody nice, loves. So nice, it's nice. in honor of my good fallen friend, Kirtan Simpson, that used to actually um, add a little thing to the sorrel during Christmas just to spice it up. So oh. it's Kirtan sorrel that we... We, we do toasts with after your team gets scored on. But great time. Nice. Um, and who were so you pulling sorry. for this year? Remind me again. Well, who so, I mean, you know, I wasn't really <laughs> pulling for either team, <laughs> but I have a lot of 49ers that are friends. So I yes. put on the 49ers sticker. We have a sticker you have to put on to identify who you are at the okay. start. Okay. You know, people try and change midway, mm -hmm. right? And it was a good time, but, you know, I have a, a lot of friends that are very heartbroken. They still won't pick up the phone. You know, oh they're God. still <laughs> kicking rocks. They're Look still in the upset. rooms this morning. So <laughs> looking in their rooms. Oh my goodness, that is so funny. Um, well, good, yes, uh, all good, all good fun. It was nice to see um, that you guys were enjoying yourselves. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about today's topic, folks. Uh, good morning to everyone as well. Uh, roll call. I see Miss Vernita straight down, Shaka Zulu, Alba, Siobhan, Stephen joining us in the UK. Uh, Miss Weebies here, Marcia. Um, who else? Oh, we got Andy, Miss Pat, Damaris. Oh my gosh, lots and lots of people. Let's push those numbers up, folks. Keep tuning in. I'm sending out the links now to the WhatsApp group as well. And of course, we're also live on Instagram. So big shout out to our Instagram followers also who are tuned in. Every single morning watching the program. First Lady, good morning to you. Miss Lucille Forbes, also here in the house. So we're going to be talking about what I think is a super interesting subject this morning. Reconstructive surgery. Hmm. Yes. This one kind of made me pause and I went, oh, okay. This is a so, little bit different. So the interesting thing is, Sandy, um, the, the number of complex surgeries and the such that, that we actually do previously prior to COVID, we used to have an arrangement um, with Dr. Mendoza, which is a physician that many people on the island would know because he had um, he was a person who would rotate through to our facility. Mm -hmm. And he actually, would, he does a few things, but reconstructive surgery was one of the things he would do as well. So you would have seen um, probably when we had the baby with, um, that we call it colloquially, the heart outside the chest, where you would mm -hmm. see the heart beating. And Dr. Benoit and his great team would have gone ahead and, and done miraculous um, things to put the, the heart back inside the chest. Mm -hmm. And then after you do that, you actually need um, a reconstructive plastic surgeon to come in and reform the outer walls of the chest. And uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Mendoza is an example. We usually would have to fly in for, for those types of procedures. Um, however, that is the one area of reconstructive um, surgery that, that we've been, I don't want to say lacking, but one of the areas that we didn't have on island, because when we needed, we would definitely fly Dr. Mendoza in, in order to deal with certain cases. So we're very, very pleased and happy. And as you know, we look to give holistic care and we look to fulfill all of the various gaps within our physician um, framework here at Health City. And that's why we're excited to have Dr. Lisa Mohanty, who has um, close to a decade of, of experience in reconstructive yes. surgery. Um, she does skin trauma, um, deals with skin tumors, wound management, and also hand injuries. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times there'll be even birth defects as an example. And this is where Dr. Lisa Mohante would come in to be able to help to, to fulfill another portion of, of what we do here at Health City. And what's also exciting um, for us is not only obviously, as always, will the local population, resident population have access to this, but in the certain parts of the Caribbean, Eastern Caribbean and the such, cleft lip and, and those types of um, mm -hmm. defects are more common. And yeah. now, you know, in my travels, it was always about, you know, when are you going to get radiotherapy? We have that covered, right, mm -hmm. from a cancer care perspective. 
Um, when are you going to get neonatology, the million dollar babies, right? Mm -hmm. And then every now and then there also was the question in regards to cleft lap and, and some other defects of whether or not we could help. And at that point in time, because we didn't have a physician that was full time with us, unfortunately, um, we weren't the center for them, but now we are. So this is also helping for you know all of our patients in Central America and the Caribbean as well. And that's why we're excited to have Dr. Mohanty here with us. And a huge welcome to Dr. Mohanty yes. to the, not only the Cayman Islands, but obviously Health City, and now she's part of the family. Hi, good morning. Good Hi, morning. good morning. And obviously your first appearance here on uh, Medical Rundown Tuesday. So warm welcome to you. Uh, so nice to have you. So this is very, very exciting because, you know, Shamari was talking about some of the applications um, of reconstructive surgery. And I think a lot of times when people um, doc think of reconstructive surgery, they kind of think of the, um, you know, cosmetic plastic surgery, but they don't think beyond um, how it helps patients who have had, you know, required surgery, how it helps them to live a more um, normal and fulfilling life to kind of, you know, put them back in a, in a good space. I'm so glad that we're going to be talking a little bit about this. So Shamari has laid the foundation for what Health City is doing. And um, I mean, this is exciting as far as I'm concerned, because, you know, I, I've, I can think of so many instances, even women who have breast surgery, and they might need reconstructive surgery afterwards. And this, this just really um, is part of the holistic approach, as Shamari rightfully said. So, Dr. Mahanti, welcome. Uh, thank you. Good morning, Sandra, and good morning, Shamari. Uh, I'm happy to be here and uh, loving the island. And uh, a very good morning to all the listeners, too. Yes. So, uh, to start with, as he uh, introduced me already, I am Dr. Lisa Mahanti. I uh, sifted from India. I was practicing as a plastic surgeon there. Mm -hmm. uh, the main thing is that plastic surgery, everybody uh, just uh, correlates us with only cosmetic surgery. But mm -hmm. uh, reconstructive surgery is a very important part of it. Uh, so it's something uh, which, you know, any defect, any uh, loss of tissue, mm -hmm. and uh, we uh, reconstruct it and uh, try to like give it a normal appearance uh, as function and appearance to it. So it's a uh, reconstructive is a very big part of plastic surgery as such. Yes. So happy to be here and uh, hopefully I help uh, a lot of patients and yes. uh, I'm looking so forward to it. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about um, some of the areas that you actually can focus on because I saw a number of really, really interesting things um, yes. on the list. So mm -hmm. everything from skin trauma, which can yes. include um, cuts and lacerations, scar yes. removal, um, yes. corns, warts, warts, sorry, calluses. Yes. Um, you know, I think a lot of people have uh, suffered from those things. So let's um, talk a little bit about what that entails, because that sounds like, you know, lots of people could t take advantage of that. Yes, uh, like small injuries, uh, somebody has a fall, has a laceration, mm -hmm. uh, I take care of that. Then uh, uh, on this island, I've seen a lot of uh, diabetic uh, patients had mm -hmm. to deal with uh, the diabetic foot, uh, how to take care of them the calluses uh, mm -hmm. and uh, some like uh, injury and diabetes that doesn't heal so fast, how to deal with them. So uh, all these things comes under my preview. And I guess uh, mostly skin traumas and uh, all uh, complex wounds also. They come uh, like uh, how to uh, heal them, how to do a good dressing, how to put a skin graft or cover it with a flap. Uh, mm -hmm. So all these uh, comes under my preview. Hmm. Very, very interesting. All right. So we've got um, laser therapy. So uh, that's uh, quite interesting as well. Yes. Laser is uh, basically for small warts and all. Uh, we are at, as of now, we are trying to procure that on the island. Mm -hmm. So once we are, uh, until unless we have that, uh, we can do it surgically. Mm -hmm. Once we get that, then we can uh, do it laser uh, by laser. Mm -hmm. And does that include things like skin tags? Yes. Skin tag removal? Yes. Skin mm -hmm. tag removal, the small warts, the corns on the foot, mm -hmm. and uh, all these are taken care of. And even tattoo removal? 
Uh, that is another laser, which is called a Q-switch. Again, we uh, need to slowly work on that and procure these uh, lasers. Okay. And then we can deal with uh, tattoo removal too. All right. So, Shamari, you're, you're working on the, the budget and the procurement of the equipment, right? And we know you're going to have the best equipment out there. <laughs> obviously, and obviously. Um, we always make sure that our physicians, when they come in, what they need, um, within reason, I should say, but what they need that they definitely have. And yeah. as you know, and as you can see, that, that we filled um, quite a few gaps within the Cayman yeah. Islands, always with the latest and greatest equipment, um, not just to have it, but because typically with that comes different advances that mm -hmm. helps with patient care. And, and, and that's why we always have the patient at, at the center and we make sure that our doctors are tooled to be able to do the best job possible. Mm -hmm. All right. Ingrid says, welcome. We've got Irvlin with a question. And don't forget, folks, if you have a question, uh, Medical Rundown Tuesday, the lines are always open, 936-2626. Um, you can call in and ask your question directly. But uh, Irvlin says, I have a uh, keloid from surgery. Can you assist with that? Yes. Yes, surely enough, uh, I just uh, need to assess her and see mm -hmm. what is the best treatment. Keloid can be treated by some kind uh, like injections as well as uh, surgically. So mm -hmm. it is uh, when I see her once and to decide how to go about it. Hmm. All right, Irvin, sounds like you need to be making an appointment to see um, Dr. Mahanti. That's uh, absolutely wonderful. Sai, good morning to you. Um, okay, well, let's continue because the next um, sort of category includes skin tumors, which is everything from a lipoma to cyst removal. And um, so this is a little bit, this almost dermatological in a way, but still falls okay. under your yes. area yes. of expertise. Yes, dermatologically, uh, they may not be able to remove it surgically. So when yeah. it is as like uh, big ones and they are sent to me so that I take it out and we send them for biopsy and get clear that it is nothing. It is a benign growth and we have got rid of it mm -hmm. and uh, very easily, very nice scar. Wow. <laughs> you know, Dr. Mahanti, I'm a little bit addicted at the moment to um, these YouTube channels <laughs> that remove all of these things all the time. So when I saw lipoma, I knew exactly what that was. And the um, cysts as well. I've seen lots of those, <laughs> these YouTube channels that I watch. But um, so that's very, very interesting. So soft tissue biopsy um, and removal. Hmm. I might actually have to talk to you. I've got a situation I want you to have a look at for me. So I'm already thinking in my head. I've got to make an appointment. <laughs> okay, so um, we also have, you talked a little bit about this, wound management. So again, these are people who might be suffering um, from chronic situations like bed sores, uh, yes. diabetic foot ulcer. Yes, so uh, like uh, the chronic patients admitted in the hospital, most of them suffer from pressure sores or bed sore as we know of it. Mm -hmm. So the same thing, we have to clean it up, we have to close the wound and uh, it's like uh, multiple times in this uh, surgery, OT. And, uh, but yes, we can take care of it. Mm -hmm. All so, right. And then also burn injuries, which is not something yes, I thought yes. of. That's very important as okay. well. Burn injuries are like acute burn when that happens, how to take care of it, how to dress it and keep it properly so that it heals. And uh, probably if it's a superficial burn, it heals without a scar. And if it's a deep burn and it leads to some deformities later, like some function deformity or something, that can also be taken care of in a later mm -hmm. stage. So that's also, again, under plastic surgery. So Yes. Okay. Let's talk about hand injuries. What sort of hand injuries do you uh, normally see people? Uh, hand them? injuries, usually uh, small children, they get uh, their uh, fingers in the door and they get uh, injury on the nails. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, crushed uh, uh, the fingertip, uh, oh, those, yeah. uh, then sometimes, uh, you know, we have uh, with age, uh, we have some pain, the carpal tunnel syndromes, mm -hmm. uh, with age, we have get pain in the wrist, that comes under uh, something we can deal with, and uh, mostly those. Mm -hmm. Hmm, very interesting. Okay. So, um, you know, I'm sure Siobhan says, wow, it's always good to educate yourself. Well, definitely, because, you know, my brain is working over time about the um, sort of, you know, plethora of different areas, really, that fall under this topic of reconstructive surgery. So it's not, you know, as we said earlier, you're not thinking just about, you know, sort of superficial cosmetic stuff. But these are things that really 
change the quality of people's lives because when you mentioned children just now you know the yeah. last thing your parent that you want for your child is for them to stand out as being different in any way because sometimes that's just you know adds a different level of you know complexity to growing up um so if they have any sort of deformity or issues you know, Dr. Mahanti is here. You can go for consultation with your young children or teens to see how best to um, to manage their care. And, uh, you know, if there are any issues that can be fixed, she sounds like she's quite an expert here and more than capable of doing so. So the difference then, um, two types of plastic surgery. There's cosmetic surgery, which I think when we hear the term plastic surgery, you normally think of. And then there's reconstructive surgery. So can you tell us, at Dr. Mahanti, what is the difference really between these two? So uh, cosmetic surgery is something uh, which the client wants, uh, the person wants uh, just to uh, change in the appearance or something which they feel uh, which uh, it, uh, appeals to them. So it is not a, uh, it is something they want, like uh, a change. So it is not an emergency. It is uh, like, okay, I want uh, to get a nose uh, done. I want this kind of nose or I want the eye bags gone, or I want uh, my breast uh, lift uh, or a reduction. So these all are the things which comes under cosmetic surgery. Mm -hmm. Whereas reconstructive, as we have already discussed, is something like a, a, we of, like build a replaced a tissue or to take care of a deformity which the person is born with, or suppose he had an accident and there is an injury so this part comes under the reconstructive surgery. Mm -hmm. Any congenital uh, defects like the uh, cleft lip or cleft palates, and uh, like uh, Samari told earlier, the heart uh, uh, thing, those all come under uh, reconstructive surgeries. Mm -hmm. hmm. Very, very good. All right, well, thank you so much uh, for the clarification. Um, Asai wants to know if you guys are hiring Shamari. Maybe we'll give you her contact details. <laughs> Um, is there an area on the website where you list current job openings? Uh, no, I mean, we, we get, we've, since the day we opened, our info line is flooded with um, requests for, for hiring and the such. So um, that's mm -hmm. typically how we go through the medical positions. Um, the non-medical positions, we usually go through our typical putting it out in Cayman Compass and online and, and the such, and we get a lot of response that way. So we, we don't actually have an area on the website. We used to, but there used to be so many <laughs> um, individuals that would list there that we just decided that targeted when we need, then mm -hmm. we'll go through the regular channels to get um, local applications for those yeah. non-medical positions. And then obviously the medical positions, we have our scenario through our parent company to be mm -hmm. able to, to get um, those individuals. and. Um, from time to time on the program, and that's coming up soon, Sandy, you'll see that we bring the Caymanians, even from a medical position um, perspective that we have hired within. And that's mm -hmm. why our whole Healthcare Explorers program is there. And we're excited where even if you would have read about the Cayman Scholar previously, mm -hmm. that's the one, well, it's, it's supposed to be a male and a female um, that meet the highest levels of academic success. Mm -hmm. And this current scholar was a former um, healthcare explorers student that came oh, nice. through two or three of our programs. And she had about 13 ones and four twos. Um, wow. She's from Clifton Hunter, right? And she is doing her sixth form in St. Ignatius right now before she goes oh. off to college. Um, so just wanted to say that we were so happy to have played a part in, in, in her development as well, a small part. Mm -hmm with healthcare explorers and, and we're also working with her to see if and when she comes back how we can give her um, work experience within the hospital so just to state that I, I'm, I'm so proud of her that um, <laughs> I'm throwing it out there that our mm -hmm. own human scholar from Clifton Hunter had so many distinctions and is well a great student that will come and work with us as well wow well done well done all right um, understanding reconstructive surgery. So, you know, we talked about the possibility that people might be born with some sort of um, a defect or acquire it through an injury as well. Um, cleft lip and palate repair. This was a thing, Dr. Mahanti, that, you know, years gone by, you would have to live with. Um, that's no longer the case. Is that right? No. no. 
uh, cleft lip uh, is operated as early as two to three months and the cleft palate is operated at uh, around uh, nine months to 12 months. So yes, uh, before even the child uh, gets a sense, what is it? Uh, mm -hmm. It's already done, taken care of actually. Wow. What's the difference between uh, cleft lip and palate? So lip is the split portion of the lip. The palate okay. is the inside part of the mouth, which you see the arch on the top. That uh -huh. is also split with the evula at the back. Sometimes that is also split. So mm -hmm. whatever, you, when you feed uh, milk, that comes mm -hmm. out through the nose. That's how you know that there is a defect. There is a connection mm -hmm. between the mouth and the nose directly because that part uh, which is blocking, which was blocking it is open. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. what it is. And lip, mm -hmm. you can see it like in the picture yeah. there. You yeah. can see it that it is split from the nose to the lip part. It is that is not been joined. That is basically what happens when the child is growing in the mother's womb. It mm -hmm. is not fused. It is left open like that. Mm -hmm. And so that's considered um, essentially a, a fetal deformity. Yes, a congenital deformity, congenital. which but we, which we can take uh, care of after mm -hmm. birth. Hmm, very nice. All right. Now, um, skin grafting for burns. Um, you know, sometimes we hear of people who unfortunately, you know, might have an injury, chemical burns, uh, you know, they're in a house fire or different things, maybe sometimes even cooking. I've seen people using, um, you know, the, the what are the pots called, Shamari, that the you put your oxtail in? Pressure cookers? Pressure cooker, yeah. yeah. I've heard of those things exploding on people and causing burn injuries and so on. So uh, you can assist those types of uh, persons yes. as well. Yes. Uh, so we uh, tell them that uh, it, uh, uh, to land up in the emergency immediately if it is mm -hmm. possible for them. And uh, first, if it is a superficial one, it will heal with the proper dressings. Mm -hmm. uh, if it is a deep one, then we need uh, dressings for a few days and then we have to cover it with the skin. And that can be taken by uh, grafts from other parts of the body, skin grafts. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, acute uh, conditions how we treat. And later on, if they uh, come back with some contractures, like some, uh, we have seen that hands are joined together because of uh, the scars, mm -hmm. that we deal as a chronic later on uh, procedures. Hmm. All right. So skin grafts, we have an idea of what that is. What is tissue expansion? So tissue expansion is like a, we have a balloon. We put it under your skin. Mm -hmm. Suppose there is a defect and we want to cover it with, with a similar kind of skin. So we will put a uh, balloon at the side of it and right. each week we fill it with water. We fill it with water slowly. It is mm -hmm. like a baby grows in mother's womb and the skin stretches. Mm -hmm. Similarly, the balloon gets filled with water and the skin stretches and stretches and stretches. So it gives us the extra skin and tissue which we require. Ah. So at a later stage, say maybe six weeks or uh, eight weeks down the lane, yes. it is big enough. And it's like a baby uh, growing on your arm or uh, on your forehead, wherever you put the tissue expansion. Uh -huh. Then you remove that and you take that tissue and put it where the defect is. Just uh, like suppose it was here, defect was here, sorry. Defect was here, we had put a balloon here. And then it expanded, uh -huh. we gave us the extra tissue and then we okay. rotated to put it here. So that's how wow. it Wow. So you do this tissue expansion in order to um, give you options for skin grafts. Not skin grafts, it's no. the whole tissue, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, not only the skin, it is for defects which require skin and the fat underneath it, not only skin. Okay, wow. So, Never heard that that's tissue expansion. Wow, you guys are getting fancy over there, Shamari. Um, you've got flap surgery. So what then is flap surgery and microsurgery? Microsurgery is something where you uh, take a tissue, suppose, uh, like say, talk about reconstruction of breast. So we, after uh, uh, cancer and radiotherapy treatment, so we take the tissue from the abdomen with mm -hmm. its blood supply and we take it up to the chest. We connect the blood supply. That's the microsurgery where we uh, join the artery to the artery and vein to the vein to provide the supply to the new tissue there. So that's mm. what is called a microsurgery. Hmm. It takes Very somewhere around 12 hours to do it. Really? It's wow. a big surgery. Okay. Hmm. Amazing. So Yvette has a question. She says, what causes eye bags? So it's basically with the age, uh, the aging factor, the fat slides down 
and sometimes uh, these fat retain so much of water mm-hmm. so it's the that's what causes eye bags if it is not uh, going away that means it is because of the fat so in that condition we and the extra loose skin which happens there mm-hmm. so we need to uh, what we called a procedure uh, called is a lower uh, blepharoplasty which takes mm-hmm. care of those eye bags both for, it is there for upper eyelid as well as the lower eyelids the lower eyelids very interesting all right, folks, don't forget, if you have any questions, I mean, I'm asking all the questions here today because I find this so fascinating. But if you have any questions, you can jump in on the live stream or you can certainly, um, you know, call us 936-2626. So um, we've talked about, you know, who is sort of the right candidate for um, this, the new constructive surgery um, and plastic surgery options available here. Uh, we see this photo here, which is somebody's leg. Now, this looks like someone who is a diabetic. And suffers from, you know, um, skin oh, conditions that a lot of diabetics would be very, very familiar with. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a lot of people in our community, Dr. Mahanti, who are diabetic. Mm-hmm. And so we all, as family members and even for ourselves, have to be very, very cognizant of um, what happens to them. Everything from their eyesight to their kidney function to, you know, skin and open wombs, being extremely careful about these types of things because they can lead to more um, serious things like having amputation and so on. So I suspect that on the constructive side, you're going to come in and help with uh, womb management, right? Yes. yes. So what happens in diabetes is that uh, the uh, nerves, they uh, like you do stop feeling the pressures and everything on your leg. Mm. So maybe it is like uh, you're walking and you get a boil So a normal person will understand that he is having some pain in the legs, so he will stop at that point. But in diabetes, the sensation decreases with time. So what happens is that a small wound lands up in a bigger one until unless the person sees us, notices us. Mm -hmm. So legs are the last, uh, like in the body, where you take a bath and clean everything up and everything up. But the foot is the last point where you look into okay i have to clean this i have to uh, like uh, keep it moisturized keep it hydrated so that's the last part you never look into that too much and uh, the small wounds they uh, slowly in diabetes the healing is slow and it keeps on increasing and then that's where you will land up in bigger surgeries so mm-hmm. whenever you notice something even starting from a, a cutting of a nail in a toes uh, sometimes we cut it too in, we land up in an ingrowing nail, which causes an mm. abscess, two abscess, then again, that mm. land up in the toe removal. So that's how it goes. So we have wow. to look it at the bud. We have to teach them how to take care of the foot, how mm. to even notice smaller things and to actually take care and how to do mm. and what to do. So diabetic foot mm. is a real big subject. Yeah. And, um, mm. So... So, and of course, you know, family members who have, um, you know, an uncle, a father, even a husband that is a diabetic, this is very, very important for them to help because if you can't feel it, then you don't know that there's something going on, right? So it's very, very important for other people to do a a check over uh, maybe, you know, once every couple weeks or somebody, I've heard of diabetics stepping on a nail and not even knowing that they stepped on something. Yes, Exactly. So it can be very, very dangerous, folks. So make sure that you keep an eye out for anyone who is a diabetic, especially to the lower limbs, the legs and feet and so on. Wow. So incredibly interesting. Uh, leg ulcers, um, chronic wounds, um, uh, v- venous, venous ulcer, is that uh, uh, with the veins in the leg? Yeah, the veins in the legs. Uh, presently, uh, like uh, what is that long-standing jobs? Or uh, they, you know, the vein uh, they start dilating, and all venous pooling. So you'll see all those spider venies on the legs and very mm-hmm. dilated veins and all. So they lead into uh, you know uh, itching and ulceration in the legs. So mm-hmm. again, it comes in uh, to take care of those wounds, how to do them and what to do them. So Mm -hmm. it's basically all wound management, uh, which I'm here to take care of. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Inspiring says, I have a question. Uh, Do you do, is it lipolysis in Health City instead of reducing the fat with a liposuction? Uh, They do lipolysis instead of reducing the fat with a liposuction. No, we do liposuction. 
uh, the, he must be talking about those uh, newer uh, uh, ultrasonic machines which do this. Uh, no, at present we don't have that at uh, Health City. Mm -hmm. And sometimes um, I know everybody wants to do less intrusive, obviously, procedures. And of course, you know, technology being what it is, um, that makes it more and more available, like laser treatments and so on. But sometimes the traditional option is still, it will certainly depend on the patient and what exactly they need done. But sometimes mm -hmm. the traditional methods still give you the best results. Like yes. I find yes. that, that especially when it comes to sort of cosmetic things, um, your options might be limited yes. um, if it's less invasive, just the nature of what it is that you're trying to do, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, cosmetic, we will look into slowly. Uh, uh, it is an option always. Uh, mm -hmm. Never a no to that. Uh, but yes, stepping into that slowly. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. Um, so, you know, just last week I was talking about the importance, uh, folks, of, you know, I myself have had an experience with um, a plastic surgeon. I had to have breast reduction surgery. And this was something that was life altering because for me, it wasn't just about, you know, the looks of it. It was about carrying all of this excess weight on my chest that was giving me chronic back uh, pain and it impacted the quality of my life. So I wasn't able to get as involved in, you know, physical activities and so on as I would have liked to. And so having had that procedure, it really changed um, the quality of my life. So, you know, you got you to gotta think about these things. Irvlyn says she's going to be making her appointment ASAP. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> yes, very good, Irvin. <laughs> Give them a call today. They're uh, ready to take your call. So let's then talk about some of the benefits um, of reconstructive or plastic surgery. So as we said, we uh, uh, reconstructive is something where we try to replace a body part or a tissue and give as much as normal function back to mm -hmm. uh, the person. So it uh, obviously improves your quality of life uh, if you are living with a chronic wound and uh, then we uh, like cover it, we close it up, then obviously you are able to again, suppose it's a leg wound and the person is able to then uh, walk around and his quality of life uh, Im improves. And uh, sometimes like say cleft lip or palate, then the child as he grows, uh, he is normal. He doesn't get to be picked out that this is it or uh, then similarly. So mm -hmm. self esteem, confidence, everything increases because of that. So that's it. Uh, these mm -hmm. are the major benefits, as I say, for reconstructive surgeries. Yes. All right. So we do have um, inspiring, says uh, Shamari, this is a question for you. One, does health insurance cover um, a liposuction procedure? So is it the case, Dr. Mahanti, that liposuction might be used in conjunction with other reconstructive elements? So it's not just by itself for fat removal, there are other times that you might actually use that machine, right? Uh, liposuction as such, um, it's very difficult to say mm -hmm. uh, because usually it is used uh, for cosmetic procedures. Mm -hmm. And uh, to okay. combine liposuction with some other procedures, suppose like say uh, abdomen, uh, tummy tuck we combine, but again that becomes yes, a cosmetic, cosmetic procedure. Mm -hmm. procedure. Yes. So yeah. and then any cosmetic procedure wouldn't wouldn't be covered. Uh, get covered under insurance. Yeah. Yeah. They should actually, we should uh, they should look into like uh, the breast reduction because mm -hmm. it causes so much backache, uh, shoulder yeah. pain, and all. But still, they have not covered it under insurance as of now. So that would be the first great change if they do that. Uh, breast reduction gets covered under insurance, but uh, I guess it yeah. takes a long okay. time. All right. Wonderful. Miss Lucille, good morning. She says that she's listening. Um, she has a doctor who's also from India and is very lovely and has lots of patience and explain things very well, a very caring. Um, so yes, says how much she loves her doctor. And this is important. And she says that she's also um, a diabetic and has had surgery and, you know, um, these are some of the challenges having to live with um, a disease like diabetes. Hmm. Very, very interesting. So Shamari, we're going to give away um, a prize this morning. So we're going to do part of it um, during your segment because I want to see um, who has been paying attention to the show today. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I, I must tell you, we've got some wonderful prizes here 
that we're going to be giving away. We've got chocolate. So, you know, tomorrow's Valentine's Day. I'm not saying that you have to eat it all by yourself. Hopefully you've got a Valentine or some family members or friends that you can share it with. But the first prize that I'm going to give away is not related to your waistline at all. Um, this one is, um, look at this. We're going we're gonna to thank one of our partners this morning. Let me just take this down so you guys can see this fabulous prize. Um, big shout out to um, Dennis over at Cellular World. So this, folks, is a beautiful tablet. I mean, this is really nice. Y'all got to see this. Um, so you can, you know, keep this for yourself. Give this to the kids. This is wonderful. So this is a really nice tablet. And you've got, you know, you can put a SIM in it, your power adapter, data line, everything. So, um, Shamari, I'm going to put you on the spot and have you throughout the question this morning in relation to reconstructive surgery. Um, don't make it don't make it too easy now. Give them <laughs> something that they've got. <laughs> they've got to really earn that tablet this morning. So now remember, you've got to call in. So these are always. All right. right. Well, this this one, this one, if they're listening, they should they should have caught it. Um, yes. They're about anywhere between four or five specific areas that um, Dr. Lisa Mohante deals with when it comes to reconstruction. Mm -hmm. Can you list, let's make it at least one, one of, I know I mentioned four areas. So one of the four mm -hmm. areas I mentioned in regards to reconstructive surgery. Okay, 9362626. You're gonna win yourself a tablet this morning if you have been paying attention. So um, I still think that was kind of easy, Shamari, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll, we'll see. see. Yes, because sometimes they're, they're, they're listening and falling asleep at the wheel. <laughs> so um, go, go ahead and give us a call, folks, 936-2626. And again, we're going to do a big shout out to um, one of our partners for the prizes this morning, um, Cellular World. They've got lots of great tech things um, on your list. Listen, it's February and you're probably still waiting on Santa to bring you that gift. And uh, just go to just go to Cellular World. They can hook you up. Good morning, caller. Happy Tuesday. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. How are you? I am well, thank you. How are you? Good. Do you think you've got an answer for us? I think so. I okay. mean, the, the tummy area is definitely going to be one of those. The stomach. Shamari. Mm, not, not, not specifically. Not specifically. <laughs> Good try, though. Good try. Oh, my goodness. All right. <laughs> Can I give another guess? Uh, call, you'll have to call back. Okay. All Thank right. You. All righty. All right. Another caller. Oh. Good morning, caller. Welcome to the program. Repeat the question, Shamari, just in case. So, yes, from a reconstructive perspective, um, I had mentioned at the start of the program that there were four areas that Dr. Lisa Mohante would be dealing with. Mm-hmm. All right, caller, you're going to wait for a guess here? Yes, it, um, is cleft lip one of those? Yeah, I mean, I definitely, yes, yes. It's, it's, a, it's I mean. We gave more general areas, but I think we'll yeah. take that as an example. Yeah, yeah. All right, caller, congratulations. So just as a reminder, it's skin yeah. trauma, um, skin tumors, wound management, and hand injuries were the four areas that I had mentioned, um, broad areas that Dr. Lisa Mohante would be would be definitely specializing and dealing with for us at Health City. Mm -hmm. All right, Woo. trying to find myself a pen here so I can take down your number caller. Give me one quick Thank second. Thank you. You are most welcome. So congratulations. Um, this is a wonderful gift actually that you've won this morning. So let me just write down your number. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. You're most welcome. All right, folks. So we've got a winner. I see other people um, calling in. We do have a winner already. So you guys got to be paying attention. And they're not difficult questions necessarily, but you definitely got to pay attention in order to win. So congratulations again to that young lady. Oh, look at this. We still got, we still got people who are like, I want to win something. Good morning, caller. We actually have a winner already, believe it or not. Good morning. morning. Yes, I was just saying that we have a winner already. Okay, I'll have a question for Shamari. Yes, oh, yes. <laughs> Hi, Shamari. Good morning. Good morning. 
Okay, just a quick question. Um, on your website, you say you guys are open 24 hours. Mm-hmm. But yes, when you call, they're saying that they're not open until 830. So, so now a question if, have, if if they're open 24 hours. Yeah, 24 hours. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. So so if you have an urgent issue, we have our trauma section that is open. Um, mm-hmm. that you could so if it's an issue whereby you can't wait to get a regular appointment, you'll definitely be able to come by and go through our trauma area here at House in East End in order to gain treatment for that. Now, if you need to have an appointment or it's something regular, we, we do open at, at 8.30. But at mm-hmm. any point throughout the night or early morning, if there is an issue, you can come to the hospital and gain access to our emergency section. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Thank and you for answering questions. Sure. Go ahead. Thank you. You're, you're most welcome. Thanks, too. And, and Shamari, it might be worth um, sharing with people, you know, what is considered a medical emergency? So, I mean, obviously, if you are in discomfort to the point where you think you can't go to work or you are anything really you're scared, even if it has to do um, with injuries such as a broken bone or if you feel like you can't breathe or you have labored breathing, anything that's causing you discomfort that it can't wait till 8.30, then it's always best to come and check. So our trauma area um, at the side of the hospital, where which has the hospital, which has the ambulance bay, is always open and mm-hmm. persons are able to gain access coming through that side at any point in time. We have emergency doctors always on rota. We have staff always there. Persons can always gain access to, if it's an urgent um, or emergency situation, they can always gain access through that side of the hospital. If it is that you want an appointment or you have a question or such, then then uh-huh. is, is when we're open. Hmm. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, anything else that we need to cover in relation to the cosmetic and reconstructive surgery um, component with Dr. Mahante? She's again... Um, an expert in this area. She has joined the Health City Cayman Islands team. Mm-hmm. Anything, um, Dr. Mahanti, that you'd like to leave some parting words with our listeners? Uh, hope I was not too fast. I know people <laughs> did get me. What yeah. is my uh, the area of expertise and all. And uh, hope to be back soon. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're we're looking we're looking forward to it. Absolutely. And I saw a few people saying that they have to make an appointment. Um, uh, that was a big I have to see you as well. So I will uh, I'll message in and make an appointment also. All right, Shamari. All right. So um, first off, just to mention that I had out in line that we didn't post our jobs. We actually do have a section. Um, it's under our career section, which mm-hmm. we put the live jobs that we're seeking on that section um, from non-medical perspective. So if you go on our website and you want to look at specific positions within the hospital that don't require a medical degree, mm-hmm. uh, you'll go in the About Us career section and you'll be able to find, right now I think we have three jobs that are up, that mm-hmm. are live, that you'll be able to apply for. So I just wanted to correct that as well. Um, and just and to mention recently- that- you guys advertise a position and we posted it on our platform as well. Correct. Um, it's an admin role, as I recall. Correct. A marketing assistant role. Yes. yes. So we have marketing assistant. We're looking for individuals within our international patient care division, as well as there's one other position I can't recall off the top of my head. So I need to refresh myself on, on that mm-hmm. section of the website as well. Um, but people can always call us as always. Um, if they want to get through to, to Dr. Lisa Mohante at 640-4040 or info at healthcity.ky. And we are finishing just in time. The reason I have on a suit today is I have a board meeting, Sandy. So yes. um, we're finishing right on time for me to get yeah. in there. So Perfect. huge thank you for ensuring that we were very concise and efficient this morning. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Um, Again, uh, Medical Rundown Tuesday, every Tuesday, um, almost, you can find the representatives here from Health City Cayman Islands telling us about the amazing scope of services that they offer. 
And um, you can certainly find out more about their offerings by visiting their website. If you need an appointment, Shamari, just remind us of the telephone number where people can call and the email address for appointments. 640-4040 and info at healthcity.ky. Okay, beautiful. All right, Perfect. Dr. Mahanti, thank you so much. Thank Have you. a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. All Sandy. right, Shamari, thanks a lot. Have and a good say one. Super Bowl, Super Bowl next year? Definitely. I'll be there. All right. Thanks a lot. All right, folks. So um, again, Health City, Cayman Islands, we've got um, some uh, really, really interesting topics coming up, but let's go ahead and take a quick commercial break this morning and we'll be right back after these messages. Ocean Ridge Heights offers an amazing opportunity to own a piece of land in idyllic Cayman Brack, right on the bluff, starting from $80,000. Located in a quiet residential area with high elevation, these lots are ideal for a future home or investment property and are sure to go fast. Cayman Brack offers a laid-back lifestyle, amazing pristine diving, limestone caves, diverse flora, along with amazing wildlife. Inquire about the owner financing options so that you can secure your piece of paradise today. With only a few lots remaining, these are sure to go before you know it. Contact Crichton Properties today on 345-949-5250 or info at CrichtonProperties.com. All right, folks, welcome back. Welcome back. 936-2626. Phone lines always open. How are you guys doing today? Happy, happy Tuesday. So we've got one winner of the day. And I can tell you, you know, I, I love a good giveaway, honey chill. So we have lots more giveaways that are coming your way. Let me show you my stash. Shall I show you my stash of stuff this morning? I think I should. Hold on now. i got to lift it up. It's heavy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, I got Zeus in the studio with me this morning. By the way, big, big happy birthday to little Zeus. Look, 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 look. Uh. Oh my gosh. Look at look at all the look at all the giveaways we got this morning. Woo, honey chow. So don't miss a beat. <sighs> we got all kind of good stuff. Whew. My goodness, if I lift that chocolate instead of eating it, I think we'd all be better off. Yes, kind of heavy. All right. So we've got chocolates. We've got some headsets that we're gonna give away as well. Um, so again, tomorrow being both Ash Wednesday and Valentine's Day. You got a double whammy in one. So um, nice. So, oh, okay. Somebody says they want to call in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, oh, there we go. Uh-oh. It only rang once. Um, not sure if you're trying to call us. All right. So yesterday's show um, was very, very interesting. Uh, really, uh, the takeaway for the latter half of the show was whether or not Caymanians are cowards. <laughs> My goodness, what a hot mess we're in. Um, it's fair to say that a lot of us are, if we had to be completely honest about the situation. And being a coward isn't necessarily a bad thing. Depends on the circumstances. Sometimes you, you've got to be a coward to get yourself out of a life-threatening situation, right? So being a coward at times can actually save your life. So I'm not saying that you need to walk around here with all kind of bravado and pretend like you're, you know, you're going to do some kung fu fighting or something um, in virtual terms. But um, you've got to know when to stand up for yourself. And so in the vein of yesterday's discussion, looks like I've missed a little spot here this morning with the lipstick, my apologies. In the vein of yesterday's discussion, you know, I want to encourage people to find your voice, you know? Um, it, it's it's interesting because a lot of people say this to me all the time, everywhere I go, oh my gosh, you're the voice of the people. And I have taken on that role and I don't mind taking on that role to you know, a certain extent. But as, if you notice, I also encourage all of you to be your own voice, you know? So that's why when you've got a story, you can't just send it to me and be like, okay, you reshare my story. I say, no, you need to call in and you need to tell us your story. You know, that's one way of, of building your own um, voice and uh, sharing your situation. And if you notice more and more people are willing to do that than before, before you couldn't get it. No, no, 
this sad day I can't call in? And you get the courage as other people do it. You say, you know what? what what's the worst that can happen? Uh, sometimes you have to ask yourself that question seriously. What's the worst that can happen? Somebody who is already treating you poorly is going to treat you poorly? <laughs> well, they're already doing that. So, you know, a, a lot of times um, fear is something that we, you know, we've internalized it. We've accepted it. It's in our heads. Um, and we just have to step out of that circle and move beyond the fear and just, um, you know, just let it, let it go. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah. Deal, deal with the fear. So um, I also encourage all of you, like I said, uh, Bobo, which is a DMS station. A lot of people still think I own Bobo. I do not own Bobo, but Bobo is a DMS station. And one of the things that they've done is they've created this amazing platform. It's really a talk radio and news uh, um, station. So the entire thing is all about, um, you know, talk radio. And they're encouraging people to have your own show. Some people want to do like a little music show, um, music and talk or whatever. It doesn't necessarily have to be all talk. But, um, you know, get your creative juices on, folks, and um, and get out there and put yourself out there. It requires putting yourself out there, right? And so there is a certain risk, obviously, <clears throat> that is involved in that. And I think a lot of you don't want to take on the risk. You still want to play it safe. And so you play it safe by just calling um, into this show, for example. And um, what I'm going to say to you is, you know, you can't play it safe in life all the time. Sometimes you have got to, uh, to jump out off the ledge and just do it. And you'd be surprised how incredibly... Um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Liberating. Doing that can be. Scary? Yes. Definitely scary. Liberating? Yes. Take it from me. Just get it done. Um, in fact, there was a video last night that I was watching. And um, I'm going to see if I can find it again. It had nothing to do really with this topic on hand. But um, it was so interesting because the first element of what he said. It's actually a tech video. And it was about, um, you know, shooting uh, cinematic um, footage, basically just using your, your camera, your iPhone. So, you know, we're in the space of tech and I uh, try to learn as much as I can on a daily basis, try to level up my game, both equipment wise and also just knowing how to use it because you can have the most amazing equipment in the world. But the truth of the matter is, if you don't know how to use it, it's not going to, it's not even going to matter, right? It's, you might as well not have it, to be honest. So um, there is something to be said for having the equipment, but there's also something to be said for um, really knowing how to use equipment. So anyway, I was um, listening to this video and um, I thought the very first thing he said really struck a nerve because it was kind of on point with what we were discussing and what we were saying yesterday. So I'm going to play a little segment of this. I do want you guys to hear this. Um, so many things can be applied in different areas of our lives. You know, one of the most uh, amazing things from yesterday is, again, Caymanians have to be prepared to step up to the plate. There will be opportunities that will present themselves to you. And if you're not ready, you can't take advantage of it. <laughs> So it doesn't matter. It almost doesn't matter if the opportunity doesn't present itself, because if you're not ready, what are you going to do? So my thing is, you have to be ready first and foremost. Someone reminded me yesterday, they said, Sandy, um, Hunter last week, uh, when we were having this discussion, I think that would have been Friday's show, asked you a question, and you really didn't answer the question. And uh, the question was, he was asking me, where were you at 27? And um, I have to, I didn't answer it because, you know, number, numbers in my head, I have to think about, I have to take my time and think about numbers. So when he said 27, 27 doesn't mean anything to me um, because I can't remember where I was at 27. Now, if I translate that into what year that was, that makes a difference because I am uh, able to then um, say, oh yeah, that was the year 2000. I definitely know where I was in 2000. Does that make sense? Because I'm, I'm not marking my life by age, but the years, like I can say, oh, I know exactly where, where and what I was doing in the year 2000. 
Um, so I had to think about it. That's why I couldn't answer the question at that particular time. And so I'm going to answer the question for Hunter's benefit. I know he's a regular listener to the show. And so in 2000, I, um, he said, where, you know, where were you, what, what were you doing in 2000? Uh, I, that would have been when I was 27. So is that right? So, somehow I, I always have to double check myself with my numbers. Hold on now. So I was born in 1973. I'm going to be 51 this year. What year are we in? We're in 2024. So 1973 plus 27 would be 2000. See, I always got to double check myself because I'm like, hmm, 2000, it doesn't seem like it's that long ago, but actually that was 24 years ago. Oh my God. Where does the time go? That's so crazy. All right. So I guess that's about right. So in the year 2000, where was I? What was I doing? Okay, so in the year 2000, I had my university degree from USF. So I'd returned from college. And uh, by then, I also had a law degree. Not for nothing. <laughs> and I also was uh, owner of an apartment. And I had a job. Um, and so the year 2000-ish would have also been when I walked away from said job and became an entrepreneur. So folks, I, I need our young people to hear me very, very clearly, right? At the age of 27, if you haven't really accomplished much or anything, and you feel like this is somebody else's problem, this is the world's problem, you might want to take a close look in the mirror. Because in my circumstances, for me to have two degrees under my belt at the age of 27 already, Listen, I did not grow up in a household with people with money. I didn't have anybody who's like, oh, we're going to pay for your tuition for you. In fact, I was even at a disadvantage compared to most of you because I couldn't go to the Cayman Islands government and say, oh, I want a government scholarship. I was even living here when I got my first degree and then I came back. So I find, again, you know, I've talked about this on numerous occasions, and I want to be very, very consistent. Um, I think that year I would have turned 27, right, Barbara? Is that right? But I want to be very, very consistent, folks, um, about my messaging, okay? We have a lot of issues, but we need to start by being ready. Are you ready? So have you done the things that you need to do? If I can say to you, poor little me, a little black girl from Georgetown, no, not family to nobody of significance. Y'all wouldn't even know who they are. Doesn't matter. I don't carry a particular name. Nobody wasn't looking out for me. I didn't have a silver spoon, a gold spoon, or no spoon in my mouth, right? It was like hustle from day one. In junior high school, I was hustling and selling chocolates to my classmates to make a little spending money. Okay. In university, I was working out there with a job. So when y'all sit down talking about you can't find a job and you want somebody to help pay for this and that for you and groceries and whatever, I'm like, huh? Really? You know, cleaning for people that I didn't know, I didn't like, but it was an honest living. It was a job and it put a roof over my head. I wasn't even getting paid money. I was just working to have a roof over my head. So I'm not homeless on the street somewhere. Listen to me, folks. Even when I moved back to Cayman, nobody didn't know who I was. They're like, who the hell is this girl? Sandra who? We don't know who she is. I'll never forget the first time I applied for my notary application. It was turned down. You know why they turned it down? They told me I wasn't a Caymanian. I was like, what? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I was like, oh, honey child, I mean, I know I just returned and all, but how do y'all define a Cayman in these days? This is my country of birth. <laughs> you know, this is before you needed acknowledgement letters. Now, it turns out that the cabinet of the day didn't even read my application because I did support, uh, provide supporting evidence of my Caymanianism. But yes, I'm a Caymanian. And they still turn it down. You're not a Caymanian. I remember Dr. Frank. Dr. Frank, I don't know if you remember this story, but Dr. Frank was in cabinet at the time. Um, or an MP or something. And I called him 
And I said, um, why did they turn down my application? Tell me I'm not a Cayman. And he said, well, let me tell you something, honey child. You got three strikes against you. Number one, you're a woman. And I'm like, okay, nothing I can do to change that. Number two, you're black from Georgetown. And number three, you're educated. And I was like, and these are bad things because of what? Hmm. You know, I got to start to see a little bit of the insight, even with our elected officials. Oh, if, if you don't know somebody or whatever, you can't get nowhere. Well, y'all know that that never stopped me, right? This is what I'm telling you. People can say no to you a million times. It's, it's up to you whether you sit back and allow their no to have any significance in your life. So you can say, you know, no means I've got to find another way. <laughs> no means, well, not in this time, not in this moment, but I'm coming back. Are people used to be more resilient? I'm not quite sure what has happened. So even at 27, by then, Hunter, I had a little apartment of my own. Nothing fancy, nothing big. But let me say this. I remember when I went to the bank and, you know, applied for the little apartment because I was like, hmm, paying rent when you have to have your landlord in West Bay and the husband is a drunk and a crackhead and stealing things. Eh, I was not about that life. So I'm like, let me try and get a little something for myself. And I remember we approached this couple. They were selling their apartment. We looked at it. We're like, okay, we like it. You know, it'll, it'll do. Um, they said to me that, um, you know, they were asking a certain price and the bank would only finance so much. Again, the bank is going to say no to that if you go to them for the full price. So we got creative. We said, okay, we can afford the full price, you know, financing. But the bank will only finance X. So here's what we're going to do. We did a side agreement. I can tell you all this now. We did a side agreement with the vendor for the difference. And so um, I can't remember what the terms were, but it was almost like a, a lease to own kind of situation, except we had actually bought the condo. But we did the side agreement where every month uh, we paid the bank X amount and we paid the owners X amount until that was completed. Again. No just means not right now or maybe not in that way, but we can find an alternative way. And you just have to be prepared and to think out of the box. But of course, if you're not prepared, like I said, these opportunities, even if it's half an opportunity, might come your way and you're not going to be able to do anything about it. So I really want to encourage our people who come from you know, a history of being fighters and of being resilient to know that that hasn't changed. Like I, I kind of feel like we have done a disservice to our own people um, because somehow we've managed to raise a generation that is having a little bit of a challenging time. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, you know, things are so tough. I'm like, Chai, you, look at you. You've never gone without a meal. You, you know what I'm saying? You've had a good life. Oh my God, some of the stories I could share with you guys would really make your head spin um, to, to recognize the difficulties a lot of your own Caymanians have been through, but you don't know it. You look at them now and they look fine and you know dandy and pretty and you see them with a nice little house and a little car to drive, whatever. And you're like, oh yeah, they got such a good life at 27. They must have had a spoon in their mouth. I, I was going to say I wish, but actually I don't wish. Because it is what makes you resilient oftentimes is going through, you know how they say diamond is made through, um, through the friction, right? So if you have an easy walk in life, it's no wonder that some of you are so like, oh my God, I can't take it. It's like, really? Resilience builds character. Buckle up, folks. It's not going to kill you. Y'all just need to really, um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I have a sense every day that we're becoming more and more entitled. And it's such an unfortunate situation because we live in a world that, uh, let me tell you something, entitlement gets you nowhere. It's the people that are going to be the hustlers in this world that are really going to make things happen. Those are going to be the movers and shakers. So listen to this video. Like I said, I was listening to this last night. This is one of my tech videos. But what he first started out with, I thought, hmm, 
This is so applicable. Smooth sea will never create a skilled sailor. The process of uncovering new ideas and discovering new tools and techniques or even finding new people to collaborate with requires that we put ourselves in places of unfamiliarity. Visionaries and trendsetters know how to be comfortable with being uncomfortable, which is where we can build the skills that make us better in stormy situations. And I think that's medicine we all need a dose of from time to time. Amen. Changes in the storytelling technological landscape should never be something we fear. Pushing boundaries is how we learn. And those lessons aren't just for the end user. It's critical to provide feedback so the product people behind technology are able to make informed decisions on what they need. So, I mean, y'all heard that, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeat it, 39 seconds in. And this man has said so much. Um, again, this is about cinematic um, videography and so on. But extrapolate that, if you will, from the topic and listen to what he said. Listen to what he said about making yourself uncomfortable, right? Going out of your comfort zone to get things done. I'm going to play it one more time because this is uh, an inspiring message today. A smooth sea will never create a skilled sailor. The process of uncovering new ideas and discovering new tools and techniques or even finding new people to collaborate with requires that we put ourselves in places of unfamiliarity. Visionaries and trendsetters know how to be comfortable with being uncomfortable, which is where we... You hear that? Com being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Oh can build the skills that make us better in stormy situations. And I think that's medicine we all need a dose of from time to time. Amen. We all need a dose of that. That's that's truth telling. That's a truth bomb that deserves a kaboom. Kaboom! Yeah. So you see what he said? We we're, we're, we come from from sailors, seamen. Smooth seas never make a skilled sailor. Is that the truth? That is what it is, folks. But there's nothing wrong. I feel I feel like where the disconnect seems to be, perhaps with this newer generation is that a lot of people, when they're going through the rough times, right? And the rough times can last for a minute. Trust me, I understand that. Um, they, they don't have the stamina to just stick with it, right? They, they oh no, I, I, I can't take a rough lesson in life. Hurry up. I need to have arrived already. But have you done your part, right? The age of 27, obviously, you can accomplish a lot. Have you done your part? Young people listening to the show, y'all are in high school. You can't be going through high school and not being focused. You know, I recognize by the time that um, I reached um, junior high school, it occurred to me that um, I got to really buckle down with my studies. And so before that, I was like a mediocre student. Not that I didn't have the capability. I didn't have the right attitude. I was like, yeah, whatever. And it was, it was a little bit of a culture shock, I must say, moving from this beautiful, cozy island that time forgot to the United States of America, where you're going to be left behind if you don't get it together <laughs> in a hurry. And so um, as I got into junior high school, getting ready now for high school, I started to see... Um, I need to scoot Zeus over. This dog is such a lazy dog. Um, I started to see where, you know, yeah, this is, you're, you're about to, to enter the big boys club now, Sandy. And these people don't really care. Um, tutus about, you know, anything about you coming from a small island or whatever. You got to make sure that you're good enough to be able to fill out a, a application um, at the completion of your high school education to get you into university if that's what your intentions are. If you want to go to law school, you got to put in the work. Remember I was telling you guys last week about Judge Castor? He said, I'll give you a reference letter that could get you into any university in the state of Florida. That's how much power he had. But it's not going to happen if you're a mediocre student, if you're flunking out, if you haven't focused, if you haven't done your community service, because all of these things are necessary. So, you know, at the end of the day, um... You have to, you have to do your part and you'd be surprised the people that will step up to the plate and mentor you and help you if you have done your part. So I hear you all and I hear you young people very, very clearly. And I say again, what have you done at age 27? What, what part have you played in your success story or not 
your success story, whatever you want to define it as. 27, I suppose, in the eyes of many is still relatively young. Um, you know, but habits are something not to say that you could not jump up tomorrow and learn a whole new set of habits at the age of 35, but the older you get and the longer you engage in um, not the best habits, the, the more difficult it is for you to see any real meaning in your life. The, the earlier you can start, it's just like good financial advice, you know, putting money in a savings and pensions. The earlier that you, you can start, the better off. And it's the same thing with your life goals, to be quite honest. Now, everybody comes to, you know, their own realization in their own time. So where I was at 27 isn't your story. That's That's me. And so that's why I think even asking the question kind of demonstrates a lack of proper understanding because I don't want to judge people by where I was at a particular age because everybody has a different story. Good morning, caller. Uh, good morning, Sandra. This is Minister Brian. How are you doing today? Hello, Minister Brian. Are you aware that you're live on the radio? <laughs> well, I guess as you say, this is me volunteering and calling in, right? <laughs> yes. How are you, Minister? Yeah. Happy Tuesday. I'm, thank you very much. Happy Tuesday to you and to the listeners of CMR. Yes. Uh, I'm calling in today specifically for a person I know that you care about tremendously and I care about tremendously. Oh. And that's for um, former principal, Miss Marie Martin. Okay. Um, I think you've mentioned this before, mm -hmm. that today we will be officially renaming the Georgetown Primary School after her. Um, yes. She has been a, a principal, a teacher, uh, a parent, uh, mm -hmm. a friend, an aunt, a cousin, a, a little bit of everything over many decades at the Georgetown Primary School. Yes. And today is a big day for the renaming of the school, mm -hmm. and that will be happening at 4.30. And mm -hmm. I only call in to say that I know that there's thousands of kids, now adults, that has went through her hands, so to speak, uh, through her tenure at the school. And I would like, if you can, I know it's, I know it's a bit short notice, mm -hmm. um, take a little bit of time just to come there and show your love and appreciation. I know she would be overwhelmed by the support. Mm -hmm. I just really want to make this day a special day for her because um, to, to rename the school after her is, is so deserving. And uh, we will be there today with the renaming ceremony. We're going to have a few short words mm -hmm. and she will be there to accept yes. the, the renaming of the school. So if anybody can make it, please come on down. You know, even if it's only for 15 minutes um, to make sure that she sees all that love and appreciation, because I know that all the people that I went to school with, whether five years before me or five years afterwards, all of the people that I'm aware of mm -hmm. loved her so much. Um, so she's an amazing person. Beautiful. See if you can get down there for 15 minutes today thank and you. show her your love as we yes, do that. Yes, thank you so, so much, I'm... Minister. Appreciate the reminder. No problem. God bless. Have a good day. Okay. Thanks so much. So um, in, in that vein, to kind of follow up with what the minister said, some very good points, we actually put up the story. Um, you know, you know, part of me wants to say to the minister, you know, minister, you know, you shouldn't have to come on the show and beg for that sort of thing. Caymanians want to support each other. We want to support um, our own people who have these amazing success stories. And this is um, a big moment. Uh, we posted the story and I can tell you, let me tell you all something now. Hold on. Let me just have a quick look at something here in terms of the numbers from that story alone. It was a it was a feel good story, and a lot of people absolutely loved it. People engaged fully um, with the story. Now, I'm I'm not gonna touch on um, the Ministry of Education um, and Education Services and what they have done to promote this event, because y'all know what I would be saying to the minister to have to call on the show and ask for people to come out and support means that they probably haven't done a really good job promoting it. Anywho, um, we will be uh, sending someone. I don't think that personally I will be there because I'm on mommy duty this week. You guys know that school is out and um, I got responsibilities, honey, yeah. But I've already made arrangements to have our videographer there. So we'll be covering it. We'll be capturing it and we'll be sharing it um, on one of the upcoming shows in a couple of days. So, but if you have the opportunity to go out, I can tell you we posted the story on Sunday. It has had almost 15,000. It's reached almost 15,000 people. Over 2,336 people have engaged with the post, um, including some 331 people loving it. 
and um, 108 people posting congratulatory messages um, to Miss uh, Martins. Now, I don't know her, you know, like a lot of Caymanians, to be quite frank. I don't know her, but she's a Caymanian. And uh, she has obviously been impactful in the lives of a lot of Cayman students that would have gone to Georgetown Primary. Georgetown Primary, before I moved away to the States, would have been uh, my old stomping ground. So I went to Georgetown Primary, but I wouldn't remember, unfortunately, any of the teachers uh, that were there when I was there because I left when I was pretty young. So uh, she might have even been there when I, I don't know how long she was there for. But if she was there in the early 80s, um, you know, she would have been there when I was there, but I don't know how long she's been there. So congratulations um, to her, um, to again, Miss Marie, Miss Sharon Marie Martin and the school Georgetown Primary will be um, aptly named after her. So this is a wonderful landmark. So thank you, Minister, for um, the reminder phone call. Again, the um, official ceremony happens this evening. If you can go out, by all means, please do so. So um, good morning, Miss Pat. Uh, so Ms. Pat says some have lost their courage or are unable to pass it on to their children. And I think maybe, Pat, this is some of what has happened. Um, you know, I've, I've, my friends over the years, a lot of people will ask me, Sandy, where do you get your resilience from? And it's not a question that I can actually answer because I don't really know where it's come from. I just know that I have always had a sense of I'm put on this earth to not give up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, whatever the end game is, it's not because it's not going to be because Sandy just gave up. I, I got to do what I got to do. And um, sacrifices of all different types, you know, have been made and you just got to keep moving, um, keep in motion. And you will, I think, eventually, you know, find your way in a positive way. So, that's why I love to see young people out there doing their thing, because even if, you know, you're not getting it quite right or whatever, that experience that you're going through can be an amazing um, and valuable experience if you just take away. It's a takeaways at the end of the day. Um, and you've got to be able to sit in it and learn some life lessons, right? So Live says um, they must be ready to lose friends and family members, accept the bash backlash they will get from people exposing what's in their closet, be brave and forget the past, ask for forgiveness and speak out. So, you know, live um, so much about this um, is absolutely true. You know, I was at, um, I was at the store yesterday, uh, stocking up on my prizes, which we're going to be giving away here today. And somebody, a guy stopped me and he said, Oh my gosh, Sandy, you're doing such a great job. Um, and he says, but you know, um, they're coming for you. And I said, oh. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. I'm going to drink some water. <clears throat> Good morning, caller. <clears throat> Ooh, Good chat. morning. Good morning, Sandra. Oh. I don't know if um, the minister, um, Minister Brian, mm -hmm. did he mention the time today or it's all day, more or less? didn't, but I'm, I'm going to give you all the information here in just a second. Oh. I, I, will, I will do a favor for the Caymans government and advertise this event. <laughs> okay. Stay tuned. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you, my dear. Sorry? No, I said just stay tuned. I'll give you all the details. Okay. All, all right. right. All right, my Good. dear. And, and, and I want to say that you're doing an excellent job for all of us that Oh, somebody said he did say 4.30, so it's at 4.30, but I'm going to I'm gonna pull up all the details here for you. All right. Okay. Thank mm. you. Amazing job you're doing, Sandra. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it, my dear. Thank you. Um, thank you um, to that caller, 4.30. I'm just going to pull up some details here for you. But listen, at the end of the day, Live says that you, you're, you might lose friends. And uh, let me assure you, anybody who you lose on the road to um, just your journey, <clears throat> whatever your journey is going to be. People will fall by the wayside. And I can tell you that that is not something you need to concern yourself with. Trust and believe me when I tell you this, okay? Young people, oh my gosh, my best friend from the time I was five years old. It's okay. You're going to be fine without that person in your life. 
You're going to go through a transition where you, as Live said, you lose people. They lose themselves. <laughs> you know, they will voluntarily disappear from the landscape. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, a lot of times you're going to be better off. You're going to be lighter, believe me, in more ways than one. Um, Pat, I think that unfortunately, a lot of us as parents, and this is where now I'm a parent and I have to try to be so careful. Every parent, I suppose, has a hope of their children having a better life than them. Maybe. Because sometimes they say that and then the decisions that they make make you, your head spins around like you're in an episode of The Exorcist. Um, but, you know, you have to be careful how you do that. Because... I've just said a smooth sailing ocean does not make for the best sailor. So there are times that you have to allow your children to go through a little rough patch and figure things out on their own. And you're always there for them. But we have done, we being the entire world up to a certain extent, definitely the Western world, have done an amazing job of, of over cuddling children a little bit too much. So that's why... You know, the things that they're complaining about, I'm just like, wow. Mm -mm -mm. This generation, whatever they're calling themselves, millennials, I don't even know what the heck they call themselves. Yeah, y'all have had it easy. You've had it the easiest in the past 200 plus years. And y'all still find it possible to complain about your plight in life. Mm -mm -mm. So parents have to step up. But even when you don't have parents, folks, that are there to teach you any of these life lessons, you know, you can find the inner strength to do what you have to do. Just me, one on one says, preach it, Sandy. People only see the end result. <laughs> and it's, I'm going to tell you what. Um, this listener said the impossible takes longer. Mm -hmm. Another listener says, um, re where you were at 27, encourage young people to consider working a second job to save for deposit for a home or to fund a second degree or another investment. High school students need uh, to get jobs for the experience. And, you know, let me be very honest with you. Sometimes you get a job and it's not even about the money when you're that young. It's simply about, I need to experience stuff. I need to be able to say on a little resume, even if it's just a year, I worked at this job and I helped answer the phone. So at least I know how to answer the phone. I know how to multitask. I know how to work a, a copier. Um, you know, I, I'll remember quite distinctly when I came back to the Cayman Islands, um, the end goal was to go to law school. So I thought to myself, okay, if I'm going to law school, where's the best place for me to work? In a legal environment. So applied to some law firms and stuff like that. And um, I was first at Walker's. Uh, I don't think I was at Walker's for very long, maybe six to eight months I was at Walker's. And then I got an offer from Maples that I couldn't refuse. Full scholarship, the whole nine yards. So I said, hey, got to go where, you know, whoever's going to be paying for school. Um, but I remember some of the machines and stuff, although I had some admin experience, even at university, because I was working during university and that sort of thing, there would have been some of the equipment that I wasn't familiar with. In fact, when I went to Maples, I was surprised that I was moving backwards with the technology because they weren't using Windows yet. They were using, um, what was it called? WordPerfect. And I've, I had never seen, I'm on the cusp of, you know, that technological cusp, Right where technology and computers really came into their own while I was coming into high school and university. And I remember looking at when word perfect, is that what it was called? And I was like, what is this? I've never seen this before. You think I was sitting there. Oh my God, I can't do this. I need somebody to help me. To, I'm like, okay, show me the basics. I'm not stupid. I can get this. Technology is here. It ain't going nowhere. So just show me what I got to do. All of a sudden, oh, you got to learn these keyboard shortcuts. I'm like, keyboard shortcuts? I've never heard of such a thing before. Yeah, control P is print. Control V is, is which one's control V? Paste. Control C is copy. Control Z is X. I'm like, okay, start writing it down, honey chill. And I was there uh, maneuvering myself because you didn't have a mouse. So you couldn't move around the screen like how we do now. You had to like use keyboard shortcuts 
and then use your cursors to kind of, and I was like, all right, I got this. Old technology, my brain was having to go back and learn something totally different. It was so weird. But you know what? Guess what I'm going to tell y'all? Suck it up, buttercup. That's, that's how I felt about it. Get it done. You're here to get a job done. The jobs I had working maples, right? I'm going to tell y'all. Some of y'all came out and to be like, oh, that's, no, no, I can't do that. That, that, that. That's too low ball for me. Let me tell y'all something. Mary Pesce will know this story. Um, when I started law school, you know, I was helping out at reception. Any, anywhere I was needed, I was there. Once it was a legitimate job, it didn't involve sleeping with any partners because I was not for any of that. Mm -hmm. um, I just did what I had to do, okay? So I worked in the library. I worked at reception. I would answer the phone. I had to adjust my schedule. So sometimes I would work like the night shift. I'd be there all to eight, nine o'clock working. Uh, we would have, that's when you get all the Arabic princes and whatever rolling through in their private jets. They come in late at night and they do their business incorporate their documents, sign up, their bodyguards stand there next to you. And I'm like, oh my God, why does he have bodyguards? Is somebody going to come in here and try to kidnap this man? What's my plan B? Like, I got to make sure I can hide underneath the table. You know what I'm saying? All these things going through your mind. But I'm like, listen, I'm just here to do my job. Okay. <clears throat> I had to do library work. This is before they had a proper library department. I was the one in the library because they have these law journals and these law books and whatever. And the way that they send the updates, again, technology wasn't what it is today. They would send the leaf in updates and they would send them in the little plastic covering. I had to remove them and then go through each specific one and know what section, because it gave you the instructions on the homepage, you know, replace these pages and this section. It was a tedious job that was boring as hell, but that was what I had to do. And I would go and take out the old ones, discard those, put in the new ones. That's how these legal journals and stuff were updated. They didn't send the whole thing. They were like in a little mini binder that you could open up and you could replace the relevant sections that were new. And you know what? Instead of me sitting there complaining about, oh my God, this is so boring. Uh, why are they having me do this kind of work? I would sit there and read a lot of that stuff. And I was like, wow, this is fascinating. Like one of the ways that I got to understand before I even took tort law, how they determine... Like, say you get injured. How do they determine what that leg is worth? Or, you know, you have a spinal injury or heaven forbid you get killed completely. How do they figure out your worth? It's actually quite an interesting calculation. The courts have a calculation that they use and it's based on who you are, what age you are, what job you had, and what was your future earning potential. So, you know, when I see lawsuits now, somebody suing for wrongful death, I'm like, oh, this is going to be interesting because the person was a medical student, um, you know, already a professional, a medical student, got killed in Harco bypass, you know, uh, about to become a doctor. Their earning potential was a lot of money. So you're talking about a payout for their life of millions of dollars. Not everybody's life is worth the same in the eyes of the law. And it's very, very logical in terms of how they work it out. People don't get that. So when they say, oh, well, my little boy died, you know, and they don't want to pay me no money. <clears throat> well, um, let's look at it this way. Your little boy was already gangbanging. The lawyers will make an argument that he probably wasn't going to live to be past 30 in any event. He was ready in jail once. That was it. What do you think he's worth? So I would sit there and I would read these things and open up my eyes, open up my mind. And I found it so incredibly fascinating. I was like, wow, that's how they do it? These are the secrets? It wasn't a secret. You just had to read. I remember when Andrew Jones said to me um, one day, you know, we got a project. We got a file management project. This is, I helped to set the foundation and created the file management department at Maples and Calder. Listen carefully. I went and I'll never forget, I sat in with Mr. Jones and he said, um, you know, young lady, <clears throat> we've got all these warehouses. We've been in business now, I don't know, 25 years, whatever. And we have these warehouses full of documents and papers and every file that we've ever handled. And we cannot sustain this, you know, keeping paper files. We can't continue to do this. 
we need to set up a file management department. We need to go into um, paperless eventually at some point. But before we can get there, we need to go through what's in the warehouses. I'm like, okay. And I need you um, as your summer project this year to spear up, uh, spearhead this initiative for me. He said, we need to come up with some policies. Can you help draft some policies? I had to go away, do some research, draft some policies about the file management, retention, and destruction of files. He reviewed it with me. Okay, let's tweak this. Let's do this. There's certain types of files that we cannot get rid of, right? Deeds, um, you know, a will, you know, these types of things you have to keep. Okay, all right. Uh, we have to have a notification process. So if we're going to destroy this type of document or whatever, we need to notify the owner. Do you want this? Do you, can we send this document to you so you can keep it instead of us being the keeper of the, the actual paper document? So it was a whole project. Listen, it required me physical labor, right? Putting on gym clothes because those warehouses had not been opened forever once they were sealed. The amount of dust in my sinuses, nostrils, everything. I was in charge of hiring workmen. Um, we had to get an industrial size um, shredder, which we had to rent from someone. And we were there shredding documents. I had to be there to ensure that the workmen didn't shred something that was actually necessary and needed. So I was there in this warehouse all summer long going through these documents, getting dirty. I mean, really dirty, right? Dust everywhere. And we were working on average 12 to 15 hours a day doing this project. And we had deadlines that we had to meet and we had to do it accurately. And I'll never forget, actually that summer I made a lot of money, honey, Chia, because the overtime, one month I made like 10 grand with my regular salary plus the overtime. But again, some of y'all would be sitting there complaining. Oh, no, look at me. They're putting me in the warehouse because I'm a Caymanian and they want me to do this nasty, dirty work and I can't do it. And, and yeah, I bet you they wouldn't make an English person do it. it. It did not even cross my mind. Sometimes we set ourselves up because we get in our own way and everybody's out to get us. Right? So while we're sitting there, oh, this person's judging me because of the color of my skin. They're judging me. Like I told y'all, you know, when Frank said to me, you're a woman, you're black, and you're educated, I'm thinking, okay, whatever. I can't change any of those things. And I'm not going to play down any of those things to try to fit in with anybody. So let's keep it moving. I went back to them and I said, uh, hello, can y'all please pay attention? You're supposed to be MPs. Okay. You, uh, you say, what, what are the requirements to be a notary? You have to be a Caymanian at the time. I guess that's since changed. And uh, here's my evidence that I'm a Caymanian. Can you please look at my application properly? Oh, well, we didn't know who you were for, really. It's called read elected officials, cabinet members. So, you know, don't give up. Don't cowtail the people. But at the same time, the amount of energy that some people spend on trying to figure out who has an issue with them because they're Caymanian. That ain't none of my business. That, that is absolutely not of my concern. I don't care. Okay? Mm -hmm. You English, American, Jamaican, I don't care, from Mars, and you have an issue with me, good for you. Let's just keep it moving. You'll be fine. <laughs> and so will I. And that's sometimes the approach that you have to take in life. You all spend too much time obsessing about people wanting to put roadblocks in your way instead of figuring out how you're going to kick the roadblocks out of the way and just keep moving. You can kick them out of the way. You can go under them sometimes. You can jump over them. You can walk around them. Figure it out. This woe uh, is me mentality literally gets you nowhere. It's a time waster. So, you know, that summer I got the job done. And let me tell you something, as well as Caymanians, when I was finished and I said, okay, sir, um, we've done these four warehouses now. We've, you know, thinned them out as much as we possibly can. He said to me, I remember Andrew Jones said, 
oh, you know, we've got to uh, now set up the file management department. I said, well, I'm out of here because school is my number one priority. Okay. So school starting back in the end of August, September, I got to go back to law school. I've done my part of the project. And he said to me, well, who would you recommend? You know, we're, we're looking for, um, you know, a, a good person. Who would you recommend for the job? And I said, oh, and I said, I've actually got the perfect person who I think I can head up this department for you. He said, really? And I said, yes, her name is Mary Stewart. And although she's working at reception, I said, Mary was a supervisor for umpteenth years at immigration. She can read, she can write. She has a lot of potential. And he's like, really? You see, he just saw her sitting there as a receptionist, cute face, nice voice. They thought that that was it. And I said, yeah, really? <laughs> he said, okay, um, have her come speak to me. Mary did her part. She got the job. And I don't know how long she was heading it up for, but she was the first head of the file management retention and whatever, whatever they eventually named the department. And she was there for umpteenth years in that department. Only just left a couple of years ago to do something else within the company. So again, as Caymanians, if you see somebody else who is capable and who has the right attitude and who can do the job, it is your obligation to not be trying to begrudge each other and trying to hold people down, but elevate your own people. Give them an opportunity. They ask for rep recommendations, say, have you considered Mary? Because to be honest, the look on Andrew Jones' face, he's like, who? He hadn't considered her. And I said, that's because he didn't know about her background and her experience and what she brought to the table. So um, she, she just responded and said, then I got promoted to head of operations and did that for almost 10 years. You see what I'm telling you? The, 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 the steps that you take but you have got to do your part. I have no time for people who are not willing to do their part. Now you think if Mary had gotten recommended for the job and went there and didn't perform, that she would have kept the job for all those years, that she would have been promoted to head of operations? No. Suck it up, suck it up. Miss Darlene, good morning to you, my darling. She says we're raising a generation of soft, thin-skinned children. Hmm? Mm -mm. Listen, all parents um, have to be on board because even me, myself, you know, you just, oh, oh, mommy, I can't eat that. I don't want to eat that. Oh, this outfit is comfortable. I tell my daughter, listen to me, honey, child, you lucky you got an outfit to wear and you got a closet full of clothes. I said, do you know how many children around the world, even right here in the Cayman Islands, do not have these things? You need to talk to your children and get them to appreciate that there's so many people in this world that are less fortunate than them, despite whatever their plight might be. Yeah? There's a lot of people who are out there who don't have half, a quarter, a third of what they have. So I don't want to hear no, no complaining. The least you can do when you're growing up in a good home, Food is on the table. You got clothes to wear. You can take the occasional trip with your children. You know what I tell them? You have a job to do. And your job in return for having this lifestyle is to do well in school. You need to study. You need to read your books. You need to pay attention. Volunteer in your community and be a good person. That's not asking a whole lot. But you have got to set standards for your children. So many of us have managed to raise children into high school who have never volunteered to help or do anything in this community. What kind of community are we going to have when our children don't know how to be of service to others? Hmm? Take them to the Humane Society and make them walk a dog. We don't really have soup kitchens as such here, but you have the food bank. Call up the local food bank, see if they need any volunteers. Make them collect money for other kids with cancer, right? Have them go and volunteer. That is part of building character as well. You can't just raise children to only think about themselves and not think about their communities and about helping other people. It's a real disservice to all of us. 
Denver says, I got a big surprise when the judge told me my net worth in a, in a divorce case. What a mess. Rough Seas says, I know exactly what you're talking about. Tell me about it, says Rough Seas. Denver says, I cut grass and dump garbage on my first job. But you see now, Denver, if you ask any of these young Caymanians to do this, they're talking about they're 27, oh, you would be insulting them. Oh, my God. You want me to cut grass? Well, I don't see no English person here cutting grass. Listen, get out your own way. Yes, Miss Pat. She says the biggest block to your success is you. A lot of times it is. And this is the entitlement that we have somehow managed to raise our children with. Diana, good morning. She says, good morning, Sandra. Uh, strong, motivating words this morning. I trust young people are listening to the show. Well, I hope so. Cameron says, big up, Sandy. Each one help one. Each one teach one. Right? So much that we can do. Good morning, Mr. Dean. He says, great story, Auntie Sandy. Kaboom, says Horace. Hey, let's give a come Kaboom! Pat says, uh, teaching children gratitude for what they have. Yes, because you know what, Miss Pat? Children have such a skewed sense of the world, right? I have heard my little daughter talking about, oh my gosh, your house is so small. And I'm like, what? I said, let me tell you something. Now, it not no 10,000 square foot. And this is also why you need to be careful. Who you allow your children to go around and the things that they see because they think that that's reality, right? There's a small portion of this island that lives a very nice life, and that is not the reality. So when I say to my daughter, we don't have the biggest house in the world, and we don't need, more importantly, the biggest house in the world. A house does not make a home. But you have more than enough rooms. You've got your own bedroom. I said, do you know that there's children? There are children who do not have their own room. Like they have to share with their siblings, squeezed up in a bed together. Some may be sleeping on the floor. They don't have a backyard. They don't have a garden. Then you have your own separate playroom. So you sleep in one room. You play in another room. Now that's your study room, transitioning as she gets older. you got a living room. Almost every single room, although we don't really watch that much TV, but almost every single room in our house has a TV. We got guest rooms and they all have TVs in them. I said, do you know there are people who still in this day and age don't have a TV? She's like, really? I said, yes. So you have to be thankful that we have what is an amazing home. You don't need anything bigger than this. Have these conversations with your children. Pat says community involvement and responsibility. Charles, good morning, Charles. He said, I told you before, Caymanians pass off weakness as an inheritance. <laughs> My God, what a hot mess. Uh, Hunter says that my main source of income is collecting garbage, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's an honest day's work. So, so what? That's good. Good morning to Miss Brenda. Hello, sunshine. During the 2008 recession, I had four part-time jobs to make up for one job, says live. And again, you're a better person for it. Trust and believe me, right? Now you appreciate that you might only need one and a half jobs. All right, folks. Yesterday, I didn't get to complete our discussions on uh, the situation at the airport. So I do want to touch on this. Uh, we had started talking about it, and then we got a little bit sidelined, but that's okay. So um, this incident um, happened uh, where the staircase basically collided with a Delta airline plane. Uh, oh, Denver, good morning, says the kaboom on this topic is appropriate a thousand times. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let's look at this. So, unfortunately, I don't know exactly how this happened. And, you know, what I will say is that accidents can't happen. Accidents do happen. But at the end of the day, obviously, somebody is going to pay for this. I guess what the hell? I'm going to get a fire truck out here. It looks like the staircase 
kind of collapsed on its side. Now, it's interesting because I can't help but wonder. Um, yeah, they had, the, they had fire extinguishers and there they are trying to pull it back right side. Child, I'm not sure how they were going to do that. But I think that unfortunately, this is one of those things that's bound to happen. They should definitely get us off the plane like now. Especially since that we have a airport. Fire. Yeah, they're not doing that. I don't know why they're pulling on it. They totally ran that thing over with their wing. Uh -uh. Flipped it. So they, you can't manually move that thing, not at all. There's like five or six of them there trying to figure it out. Yeah, I hope it. That's the commentary in this. Yeah, they, got, they definitely got to get us off this plane like now. I mean, obviously this passenger who was on another flight was concerned about his own safety. Thinking, oh, if this turns, if this turns out to be more serious, higher, whatever. Yeah, flip it. You know, we probably shouldn't be that close to it. It's not on fire yet. Yeah. But as much as it was smoking, um, yeah. definitely a concern. So, um, let me speak to this. Because this happened on Friday. Let me just find the official. We got an official statement from the CIA on this as well. This is at our airport, Miss Anne. She's like, where is this? Yeah, this was at our airport on Friday. I'll go help them. So, here's a little kid in the background. I'll go help them. <laughs> so cute. I'll help them figure it out. And, and yeah, I, I just heard it. I didn't see it happen. Yeah. I just heard it. I was like, huh? Uh huh. So they were on the plane when it happens. Uh, like uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, they. So, um, you know, listen, I, I heard the damage was extensive to the plane. Um, <clears throat> these planes are hell of expensive. So it's not like this is going to be a cheap fix, but <clears throat> we um, got word from someone who was actually at the airport within minutes of it happening that this has happened. And we posted our first uh, sort of video of it. And then we got additional information um, as it went on. We do have some additional footage and stuff as well. So let me just show you guys uh, some of this. But needless to say, this made me think of the fact that, you know, when we built this airport, we decided to cut corners. Uh, we wouldn't build it so that the planes are actually connected to the proper, um, I forget what those things are called, but the proper walkway where you walk directly on the plane. So unfortunately, this will be one of the end results of having a setup like this is that on occasion, um, <laughs> these things may happen. Now, I can't recall this ever happening before. So I'm guessing this was just a little user error. Uh, you know, somebody from FADS moving the staircase. Um, they were too close. They were, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly how they managed to have this happen, but it happened. And so it's really, really unfortunate and of course, this is a matter for fads, um, for them to pay the bill. This ain't got nothing to do with, um, let me see here if I can download this other video. This has nothing to do with we the people. We we are not going to foot this bill. This is, you know, I'm assuming fads has insurance. And these are the types of reasons why you carry insurance. Because then you cover your own behind. Um, the jetway. Somebody remind me of the name of that. I'll read your comment here in just a second. Let me just see if I can, I think I need to convert this video. Um, hold on one second here. Uh-oh, hold on. That's not the right video. Um, huh. Okay. We have this one. So here's another video that was shared, uh, with us. Delta, here we go. Here's another angle of it on the fire surface. 
Now we see the fire service actually arriving on the scene. Uh, big shout out to the Cayman Island Fire know. Service doing their job. These are the types of um, situations that they're there for because they have to make sure that, um, you know, this does not turn in to anything more serious. Because as the caller, not the caller, but as the um, passenger rightfully acknowledged and accepted right away, this could be a situation where, in fact, um, the, uh, you know, that turns into fire. And then, of course, around any kind of mechanical things, airplanes and so on, that becomes a very dangerous uh, situation. So here's another angle of it as well. Um, again, fire service now at location. And uh, you see the staircase turned on its side. So this is from like the other angle. So where that person was sitting, they were actually in the flight on the plane next to it. You could see the underbelly where the smoke and stuff was coming from. This is the opposite side now where you can see the little stairs. And uh, somehow it, it managed to go right underneath that wing was like and then top it over and put it. So, I mean, I, I have a lot of questions about how this happened. And I'm sure a proper investigation has been done to all the relevant authorities. But why would a staircase be in transport um, underneath the wing um, of a plane where this could even happen? I'm not entirely sure how that came about. Like, it seems like a very bizarre kind of accident, uh, to be quite frank and honest. Yeah. So, um, uh, sources said that there was severe damage to the wing as a result of this. Um, the Cayman Islands Airport Authority is still investigating. I don't know once they've concluded their investigation, if we will actually get to see that report, because this is one of my pet peeves with all government agencies and departments and so on. They do these investigations and we never hear anything about it. So I'd like to see that. The incident impacted flight operations at the airport for about 20 minutes as the Cayman Islands Fire Service was diverted to the scene. Uh, so this is a Delta 737-900 aircraft originating from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and it again made contact with a set of stairs, the stairs truck, which is owned by FADS, which they do all of the ground handling services at the Owen Roberts International Airport. Um, they say that there was damage to the airport the aircraft's wing as it parked, and it also caused the truck itself to tip over. And thankfully, no injuries were reported, and flight operations resumed uh, shortly after that with no further disruptions to service. So Delta arranged for a relief flight for those passengers who remained in Grand Cayman and were originally scheduled to depart um, on the Delta DL 1870 flight back to Atlanta, Georgia. And the CIA then issued a statement about safety and security of passengers being their top priority. So how did this happen? I don't know. I mean, all sources seem to point um, to the fact that um, it was likely an error on the part of the of the guy driving the, the fads, the staircase. Um, we'll, I guess, like I said, hopefully hear more about the investigation as it progresses. So this person says, morning, um, another way around, other way around, the aircraft collided with the stairs, which was left parked and running. Um, so not bound to happen at all. There are policies and requirements to place in place for the operation of supporting equipment. So what this person is saying is that the aircraft collided with the stairs because somebody left it parked and left it running. But who, who does that? Who in their right mind or wrong mind would leave any kind of equipment parked on the um, the runway where planes are coming in and out and having having to move around? So if if that is how this happened, that's even worse, really, than it trying to go up to the plane because that means that somebody was negligent for more than just a split second. Uh, this person says wrong. Even with a jetway you will have support vehicles for the aircraft. This is a major learning experience. Huh. FADS has massive insurance because they also are involved with the airport security. You train your agents and have them qualified and signed off, but they're still doing something stupid resulting in accidents like this. 
It was a FADS agent error. All driving equipment stop and put on emergency brakes while an aircraft is coming in. Additionally, the wing walker and marshaller should have stopped the aircraft if there was a driving vehicle close to the aircraft that they were marshalling. So those are the people who do all the little signals and bring it, signal the plane. They bring the plane in. So um, that's quite interesting because hmm, what a hot mess. Um, this person, good morning to Scott, says strong wind makes strong trees. There's a difference in foundation building and building slash changing habits. Opportunities or obstacles in disguise. Further to the response, I would like to ask the question, were all parties tested for sobriety? Oh, that's an interesting question. Uh, this person says, good morning, Miss Sandra. Mr. Frank fired the guy who was driving the tug. Oh, Jesus, he got fired already? Wow. I mean, uh, I heard that Mr. Frank was not happy, but firing him that quickly? Whoa. Okay, honey chill. He doesn't believe in second chances. Morning, Dominique. Uh, he says, I think that that's hydraulic fluid that's coming out. My question is, why was that truck there? <laughs> yeah, Miss Brenda, that's a good question. And I don't really know. Um, what a mess. Uh-uh. Uh, Bavon, good morning, says that the parents are not appreciative or don't know how to be appreciative. How could the children or the young people today could be or learn how to appreciate? Ooh, Bavon, this is such a good question. And unfortunately, that is one of her biggest issues. Um, a lot of her, let, let me just take a, a quick commercial break. My sinuses are starting to irritate me just a little bit. So let me sort that out with a commercial break. Um, let me see what we got queued up here. We'll be right back after these messages. Recover personal injury attorneys, helping injured people get what they deserve. Did you know that insurance companies have lawyers that represent their interests? Before signing and accepting any settlement, know your rights. Call us today for a free consultation at 924-9999. That's 924-9999. Recover. Your personal injury attorneys are on standby to assist. In the mornings, no one wants to miss listening to the cold hard truth or reading CMR. Cayman's number one news platform has made your morning commute fun again. Pass this time with the cold hard truth on weekdays from 7.30 a.m. Talk radio that's engaging, entertaining, and enlightening. But be careful. Some mornings it's so hot you might run into a bit of trouble. All right, folks. Uh, welcome back. Oh, my goodness. One second. Are you tired of overpaying for TV services? Can't figure out VPNs? Constantly missing your favorite TV shows? And no access to the good stuff on streaming services? The frustration is real, but it doesn't have to be. Contact Roke, Cayman's streaming pros. We'll put you back in the driver's seat in front of your TV. Call, WhatsApp, or message Roke today on 926-1213. Roke is not a TV service provider. Terms and conditions apply. Los saluda DJ Yoyo The Energy y estás escuchando The Cold Heart Truth con la voz del pueblo Sandra Hill todas las mañanas 7 y 30 AM Only on Bobo y 9.1 FM Alrighty, still got a little bit of sinus problems folks. So um, the question about sobriety, well I don't know if they do random drug testing of their staff, I mean I would hope so Um I think anybody who works at the airport should be subject to random drug testing because obviously these are really, really important jobs. Um, so I, I can't speak to that. I can't speak to the person's sobriety. I mean, we simply don't know enough. Um, is that part of the investigation then that would have been undertaken by CIAA? I hope so. You know, sad to hear somebody's lost their job, but... Um, there are consequences, folks, to your actions sometimes. Even when there was no negligent or it wasn't intentional. I don't know. I don't know. 
Uh, Bavon has a good point. And uh, what I would say about that, Bavon, is this is why we as parents have to really evaluate our own behaviors. Because the truth of the matter is, you know, the biggest teacher, the biggest influencer, everybody's talking about, oh, you know, their influence out there, social media influencer, the biggest influencer on your children is you. And so if you um, relegate that power to somebody else or you neglect to do that, well, then, you know, we got a problem. And I see it all the time. Even, even parents now, they're going through certain situations and they're refusing to go out there and get jobs and help themselves. I'm like, you're teaching your child that they must look to somebody else to constantly bail them out of a situation as opposed to you making the necessary sacrifices and doing what you have to do. I'll never forget during COVID, there was a family in Windsor Park who was, um, they were shut in. They got COVID, uh, and this is when we were still in lockdown. They had a COVID case, one or two in the family. And this was a family of one, two, three, I think three kids and then a mother and a father. And um, unfortunately, <clears throat> they posted something on Facebook about, oh, how no MPs didn't come to our door and brought us food and this and that. And I, I remember reading it, Bavon, and thinking to myself, huh, um, that's kind of interesting and crazy. Because why would you expect that? Now, I know that there were people who were in legitimate need, right? They didn't have an option. They didn't have a plan. So the second they got locked down, all of a sudden they're like, oh, I don't have any money. Would you have had money if you weren't in isolation? I'm just curious, right? So a lot of y'all were, um, somebody says his comment deserves a kaboom. kaboom. Thank you very, very much. <clears throat> so a lot of people were begging and I'm thinking, okay, if you weren't, isolated in COVID, would you still be begging? Or you feel just because you're sick with a flu-like disease that all of a sudden you have no money for groceries? I get that you can't go get groceries because of the COVID restrictions. That is a different situation than not having the resources to get the groceries. But I found a lot of people are taking advantage of it. And so, you know, there was this one... Um, family that I'm thinking of now, they went as far as posting stuff on social media, lambasting the government for not delivering them bags and bags of groceries to feed their family of five. Now, keep in mind that this would be the same family who drive around in an Audi posting on social media about, oh, look at my car. I just got this new car and I got it all tricked out, this, that, and the next thing. This would be the same family who's constantly posting on social media that they can afford to eat out every single day. These people don't cook. They're at Casanova's. They're at this restaurant, that restaurant. When you're feeding a family of five at Casanova's, I can tell you that that's not a $25 bill. So I am confused <clears throat> by the contradictions in your behaviors, right? This is really all about mismanaging your finances, wanting to show off for the Joneses. I was sharing with somebody the other day because they said to me, <clears throat> we're talking, just so happened to be talking about the same family and, you know, things that are going on with them. And I said, you know, it was so interesting because at one point, they had a, um, some rental property that they were subleasing. And I was interested in having a discussion with them about subleasing it. And um, I looked at the space and I said, well, what's your price? And they gave me a price. I said, oh, no, 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 no. That, I, I'm, I'm not going to pay that price. That's mm, ridiculous. I remember the father, and again, came at and some of us don't have no sense. But we open our mouth and we say certain things that, you know, reflect the fact that we have no sense. I remember him saying to me, <clears throat> Well, Sandy, you know, if you, if, if, if you can't afford it, um, you see that Benz you got it there? You might just go sell your Benz and then you'll be able to afford this. <laughs> I chuckled. I was like, excuse me? I didn't say I couldn't afford it. I said it's not worth what you are asking, okay? And that doesn't have anything to do 
with me driving a Benz or not. Because little do you know, that Mercedes Benz was paid off two years before that loan even finished. And I said to myself at the time, this is going to be the last car loan that I get. The next car that I want to get, I'm going to start saving from now so I can pay cash for the car that I want. But you see the assumptions that people want to jump to when they themselves are horrible at fiscal management. So while you all are begging MPs for groceries and gift cards and whatever, those habits, as Bavon rightfully said, are being passed on to your children. And you're demonstrating to your children that when you're hungry, you don't go and learn how to fish and make ends meet. You go and beg somebody for help. We all need help on occasion, but that should not be your regular MO. If every single week you're having to beg somebody for a gift card to buy groceries and this kind of, you need to ask yourself why. What do I need to change about my life in order to ensure that this doesn't happen? A lot of young mothers <clears throat> will say to me, oh, Miss Sandy, I don't have um, a boyfriend who is helping me. I said, oh, so you have children with no good fathers. So tell me now, because I need to hear this, have you tied your tube? Have you stopped checking these no good men? They're going to breed you with more children and offer you no assistance. If you are not prepared to help yourself, there will be people who are going to look at you and go, why should I help you? Get it together. Bavon is a thousand percent. That deserves another kaboom. A thousand percent accurate. You, as parents, are your children's biggest teachers. Now, listen here. <clears throat> to continue the story about this family in Windsor Park, I said to them, I'll help out because I don't think you need to run to your MPs for everything. Send me your grocery list. What do you need? Remember, there's the same guy now who tell me I must go sell my Mercedes to pay for over overrated subleasing situation, which I turned down, right? You know what kind of stuff he had on the list? Hair gel, shampoo, and steak. <laughs> I was like, wow, y'all are crazy. If you have to beg people for food, let me tell you something. You don't need to be eating no damn steak. I'm sorry. Steak is a luxury item. You see what I'm talking about, Caymanians, though? Steak isn't for poor people who claim they have no money during COVID to buy two bags of groceries. Okay? So I'm not buying you no steak. What you need is bread, eggs, rice, pasta, and chicken. Things that you can prepare some staple items in different ways. You add a little different sauce to the chicken, and all of a sudden you got cow pound chicken. You do it a little bit differently, you got curry chicken. You do it another way, you got yourself some stew chicken, barbecue chicken. Chicken is one of the most diverse meats in the world. You just throw some sauce on it, you can make it into almost anything. <clears throat> uh the circumstances change after that, continued to go downhill for this family. And again, they were in need of groceries. I was happy to help. They sent the exact same list that they sent during COVID. Funny enough, with the steak and stuff on it. I said, uh-uh. I said, you won't be getting steak. But I said, I had the conversation with the father, right? Because, of course, he wanted to play victim, the victim role now. And I said, let me tell you something. What you need to do right now, you've got three impressionable, young and impressionable kids. I said, but you have got to teach your children some life lessons, right? Your children, two of the three are actually obese. Childhood obesity is a serious issue because you have taught them that they can sit down at a table and eat an entire plate of food and then go back for second and thirds and continue eating and stretching out their poor little stomachs and their poor little belly. That is called gluttony. 
So you have to have a real conversation with your kids now that your finances mean that you can't be driving around an Audi anymore and say to them, you know, mom and dad, and I really making any money again. We don't have a job. We're asking other people for assistance, but that means that we have to be responsible with the help that we're getting. And that means that you can't have two plate of foods, of food. You might just have to do with half a plate now for lunch and the other half of the meal you eat for dinner. Teaching your children how to sacrifice a little bit, right? Not be gluttonous, not stretch out their stomachs. There is something to be said for that. You know that amount of parents I hear complaining about the portion sizes now that the government food is free, about the portion sizes that are being offered to their children. And I look at their children and I see a child that young girls in particular eating so much food that the age of like eight years old, they already have little bubbies. So much hormone filled crap that they have feeding these children and too much of it that they already have breasts at the age of eight. And I'm like, uh, this child not starving. Okay. Let them know the same plate of curry, chicken and white rice and all this foolishness that they can sit down at your house and eat. If you go to uh, any restaurant in the world, restaurant portions are not that. Teach your children to do better. And you have to do that by setting the right example for them. Thank you, Bravon. Nikki says, Sam, do you know Cayman was, uh, owns none of that equipment? Also lack of staff, part of the problem. The same person bringing the step, also parking the plane with those lit sticks in their hands. So where do we get the equipment from? So you're saying that FADS doesn't own that equipment and CIAA doesn't own that equipment. So who owns it? We're releasing it? Lack of staff? Huh. Well, Nikki, this is why a thorough investigation into what happened here is very, very necessary. So if it's a staffing issue because they have that poor guy, probably a Jamaican or Filipino, I'm just saying, um, working that, plus he got to go now and clear baggage and he has to run to security. If it is the case that he is doing too many things and pulled in too many different directions, CIAA needs a report that reflects the accuracy of what the problem is. Gareth, good morning says, I believe Grand Crew didn't use the correct wingspan and use a 737-900 wingspan instead of the 737 MAX 9 wingspan and position the air stairs too close to the stand, just my speculation. Huh. Uh, the guy don't normally work at the airport. They had to bring down a plane for passengers and also workers to repair the plane. Lack of staffing is a problem. Oh, Nikki. That's interesting. So again, th this is a problem. So CIAA, hopefully y'all have taken this into consideration in terms of your investigation. Because if you have someone who doesn't normally work out there and all of a sudden you just, oh, well, you're short staff and you put them out there without adequate training. Is that really that guy's fault? Yeah, he has been fired, strong will, is what our sources are saying. So is that really his fault, though? And I see a lot of employers doing this. They put people in a position where they're not adequately capable. And when it comes to safety positions, this is a very dangerous thing to do. But they're not capable of doing the job. And so employers are like, oh, yeah, you can, you can do this. You can do that. You can do 50 million things. And they think that you can do it. And it puts so people at risk. Now, if it's an office job and the least that's going to happen is somebody isn't going to get an email, we don't care about that. If it's safety at the airport, <coughs> that's a problem. Good morning, caller. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good. Got a little bit of tickling in my throat. Yes. Nothing more than that. Anyway, um, I don't know how to story started with the children and gratitude and upbringing and stuff. So I won't comment on that. Uh -huh. um, 
but about this airport. You, you, that means that you were late to class this morning, madam. I, I, was, <laughs> late, I was late to class. Uh, Actually, I had a, um, I had a free class. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, no problem. Um, but this airport thing, I've said this before, and I will keep saying it. And now this has happened, and hopefully, this will be looked at very differently and as a learning um, experience and perhaps um, a warning um, to what could happen in the future. First of all, that airport ter tarmac is the point of entry to our country. Mm -hmm. I would consider that mm -hmm. um, like national security. That should, that, those jobs should never be contracted anyone else. This should be people hired directly by the airport authority and screened as vigorously as possible. Mm -hmm. That is national security. Yes. I don't know what anybody else would think about it. That's my take on it. And I'm going to go back in time now when this was long before we had a big airport or a mm -hmm. bigger airport. This is back in the day when they had the little, um, was it Tom and Group or whatever it was building? And you didn't have these people out there. Who met those planes? Were the police officers, customs and immigration, customs slash immigration, they were seen. They were the ones that met those planes. And it had to be a reason for that. Even back then, it was seen as a matter of importance. Mm -hmm. And I think the government needs, I don't know who this falls on there, mm -hmm. but the, the government needs to look at this with the view, this is national security. We mm. cannot have this job subcontracted out to others. Mm -hmm. This is not a, a work permit job. This is not a $3 an hour job. That will stream people properly to handle this. Just looking at that video, and I'm no accident expert, I had already figured out what was wrong there. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that concerned me the most is all of these people flying around this truck like mosquitoes, but nobody thought to call the fire service, mm -hmm. which is just a few steps down the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I suppose that would be the gasoline mm -hmm. that was oozing out of that vehicle. Mm -hmm. could have happened. And, they they and did they definitely did look confused, I must say. They did, they did, they did. And and then bear in mind that we had passengers in the building waiting to leave, and then you had two other aircraft sitting there. Now I don't know if they had people on them or not. But yeah, well one of one of these one of these um the first video I showed is from a person who was in an aircraft right next to it. And you heard I them you that, heard I them saying you heard them saying, um, we, we should probably get off this plane. Where's the fire truck? Where's the fire service? And one little boy at some point says, I'll go help them, a little kid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, um, that, that, could, that really, really could mm -hmm. have been the disaster of the center. Yeah. Thank God it was not. Those planes are max nice. Obviously, their wingspan is going to be bigger than the other planes they were bringing in here. And I don't know if I'm right or wrong about this. Mm -hmm. And I'm not stating this as fact. I'm just saying what I observed. I didn't see a driver in that truck. I saw people taking what looked to be the document bag out and so on. I saw no one trying to pull a driver out. So it begs the question, was the truck sitting idle out there? You know, planes are not like cars. We can hit a reverse gear and, you know, go back and maneuver and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So if the plane was already coming forward, there was nothing to stop that plane at that point. This is a plane. Mm -hmm. You're not talking about two cars. Exactly. That are on four tires. Yes. And that is our airport. Mm -hmm. So. Thank you, Colin. I'm going to repeat. I'm going to repeat and say, I really, really hope that all of our government members, all 19 of them, will sit oh. down and look at the situation and realize how lucky that we were this time. Thank you so much. So um, somebody says give her kaboom. Kaboom!
Um, and by the way, thank you for clarifying this. This person said to me, Sandy, this video isn't from someone on another plane. This is a video from someone on that plane, on the Delta flight. And, I'm, and now I'm realizing it, and that's why we only see that wing portion in, in this. And then you can see as they move it a little bit, you can actually see the window. So this person is on the flight, which is why they were saying, makes more sense now, that we should probably be quickly evacuated and get off the flight. So even the fact that they were sitting there watching this, and this video is over two minutes long, and there was no um, evacuation protocol to quickly get them off that plane, I think should make us all pause for a minute and say, what? You would have thought that there would have been a move in case this escalated quickly to get the passengers off of the injured Delta flight off of the plane as quickly as possible. Thank you, um, Kevin, for pointing that out. Um, that that is actually the, the flight, the Delta flight that's in question. So um, I'm hearing this morning that another area of concern is people are saying to me, Sandy, some of these guys are working, they're being overworked, they're working seven days a week, no breaks, they barely get a little lunch break. Um, someone did mention that the fire truck would have been there within three minutes. Um, well, this was over two minutes video, so I guess that was the first two minutes of the incident. Um, but people also mention the fact that a lot of these guys are working really, really hard and they're stressed out and some of them, when they're getting a break, might actually be, you know, taking a little lunch break that includes a beverage of their choice, an alcoholic beverage. So I don't know. Good morning, caller. Hi, morning. How are you doing today? Not bad. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm mm -hmm. good. About the airport situation, mm -hmm. based on my understanding, mm -hmm. as has mentioned by other persons on your, on your program, it's a lack of staff which is the problem. Because mm -hmm. my understanding that the guy that is actually parking the plane, that guy with that little thing in his hand, mm -hmm. waving, mm -hmm. he was the same person who parked that step. Mm -hmm. Which shouldn't be. We're talking about safety protocol, especially at the airport. Mm -hmm. When you talk to the staff, all the little about being overworked, mm -hmm. should have should have three per four person working, you have two person working. And I also understand that this guy is not used to working at the airport. He's used to working, driving truck for the same contractor somewhere else, mm -hmm. which shouldn't be. So yeah. Question, Sandy. Yes. Those equipment at the airport, mm -hmm. are they for the government? Well, somebody just said that <clears throat> it isn't, um, that we don't own it. Now, I don't know if that means that FADS doesn't own it. Or if they're leasing it, I mean, to me, it'd probably make more sense to own that. But I don't, I don't really know, to be honest. That's a question that we'd have to ask. Well, well, you can ask that question. From my understanding, mm -hmm. all of those equipment are not owned by. They're not owned by the Cayman government. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, they if the not... Cayman Islands isn't provide, if the government isn't providing the service, it could be that the service provider is the one who owns it. But that's a question now. Like you said, I'll try it to find is, out. It is. It is. Yeah. It is. And that guy was fired immediately. His ID was taken from him. Oh my gosh. And he was he was told to leave the company immediately. Wow. So does that mean then that he wasn't subject to any statements, any questions, any drug no, tests? No, his ID his ID oh, was no. taken from him on the spot and said, Please no. leave the compound. No, no, no. That's and that's that's before, poor. I said before this guy normally normally <laughs> works for the same contractor at a different location. Yeah, that's poor. Um, not so, not so to it, say it, that... It, if, it, it, <clears throat> let me, sorry. My apologies. Not, right. not to say that if you found him after a full investigation to be at fault, that termination might not be the end result. But I think that's firing right. him prematurely speaks an issue with the management at this organization. Because why would you fire him before you've had a statement? You've had an opportunity to drug test him. You've had an opportunity to review footage to see what happened. Firing him on the spot and taking his ID seems to be a knee-jerk reaction. And in these types of situations, what you want is a proper investigation. That's right. That's right. Mm. It's, 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 
the airport, and that person's car is in that, those present individuals sitting in Delta. Mm -hmm. so, I don't know that it has just come in. It's coming in. So the person who had left it for the person what a step there. You're breaking up a little bit there. Um, are, we in, are we in right now? Yeah, the connection seems to have gone a little bit down, deteriorated a little bit. Okay. I'm in clear. Um, still, still a little bit spotty. I can hear you, but it's not the best quality. I know it's the system is going a little bit before me. I, I couldn't hear very clearly. Mm -hmm. The note. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking a better now. Um, yeah, go go ahead. Let me see how it sounds. Yes, but I was saying that that safety wasn't where it should be. Because mm -hmm. you can't have the same guy who is packing the step, mm -hmm. bringing the step there when the thing is coming in, jumping out of, the, out of that truck, <laughs> or whatever it is, doing the trick or the drive there, mm -hmm. and then running with his stick, going there, showing the plane how to park. Mm -hmm. And something is going to happen. Because mm -hmm. he's going to miss some, uh, some rushing to get at the appropriate position to direct the plane. Check it about where the, the, the steps should exist, where the steps should be. Some of these players have different wingspans. And I'm like, oh, oh, was he trained? That's the next question. Was he a trained person? Or mm -hmm. just bring him to the location and say, this is what you're doing, what you do, and what you do, you put the, the, the step here, mm -hmm. and you do that. Was he trained properly? All that is important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All those questions is let out there hanging. Mm -hmm. You know, Thank you. And when they come on to the airport, mm -hmm. airport safety, they remember how the plane, these planes cannot reverse it and they have to be pushed out. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate it. Oh, so you can't imagine a big fire was there. That, oh that, 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 that's what could happen. Yeah, this could have been a lot worse, and we have to be thankful for of that. Course. But it does beg of course. Um, a lot of questions. But thank you, Colin, for that contribution. Uh, Okay, have a good day. Thanks for you having too. me. You too. All right, there. Yeah. So another yeah. person says people don't know what they're talking about. Um, I work with CIA, and they're not responsible for what happened. Fads was probably short staff and had this man either in the wrong position for the day or have him doing dual roles. There's some crap they all that's some crap that they always do and then turn around and fire the guy when they're fire guys when they're stressed in every direction. CIAA role is to provide oversight on the air side to ensure that they're doing the correct things at the air side and to provide relevant training. FADS owns the equipment, so to answer that question, uh, which I suspected would probably be the case. So FAD owns the equipment just like CDS owns theirs and Cayman Airways owns theirs. Sandy FADS do this all the time. Uh, they do not care. Trust me. They have some of the hardest working people who do well, but they're treated like dogs and they get cursed out and threatened with their work permits. Mm -mm. Mm, mm, mm. Um, wow. The, eight, the airline handlers are the ones that deal with the aircraft. Their staff are trained and qualified and signed off. No one else can touch the aircraft. Their audits done often. The jetways will not change that policy. There'll always be the need for support vehicles. This is an unfortunate event. The airline handlers are the owners of the support equipment. I think it might be worth asking, um, getting a story, correct story from FADS or Delta. But this is one of the things that uh, we're hearing consistently from people that the staff at FADS are not treated well at all. And I have, this would not be something that is necessarily news to me. Um, they haven't spoken out, but um, yes. Yeah. So this other person says, Sandy, some of these workers with FADS, they have five to six titles. Very, very sad but the owner will work these people so much and it's very sad. And you know, overworking people who are responsible for safety is a major, major <clears throat> mistake <clears throat> that can cost people their lives. You know, that's why in the United States of America, for example, um, especially certain types of truckers and heavy equipment operators, they have very, very strict rules about how many hours they can be scheduled to work for. And you can't have them as somebody is, is, you know, a cement driver. You can't have them working at the airport. You can't be pulling people from all different directions if they haven't been sufficiently trained, have enough training hours, and that is their primary job. So there's also something to be said here, folks, about maybe the management 
at fads and exactly what it is that they're doing. This other person says, good morning. The stairs are supposed to be for Cayman Airways passengers to deboard from the back of the plane. The same guy that parked the stairs was the guy that wing walked in the Delta plane. Uh, Fads has a nasty habit of letting his staff do multiple jobs for the same pay. Uh, Slave driver shaking my D head, my darn head. So again, lots and lots of people um, are saying the exact same thing. That um, the company slave drivers and uh, have a reputation for making these types of decisions. Somebody else says, I heard that this company is horrible to work for. Uh, seems like that's coming out. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Not news. Have heard that fads have acquired the contract for the new, have acquired the contract for the new private jetway services. What new private jetway services? Um, so <clears throat> by all accounts, Wow. Um, Somebody needs to do some shaping up based on all of these messages that we're getting from people about how staff are treated. Let me tell you something. You can only treat people so bad for so long. One of these days, y'all are going to mistreat the wrong person and they're going to send a message, not just to fads, but to this entire country about why you should not mistreat people who are working at an airport and in charge of ensuring security. I'm not going to say any more because then I put my goat mouth on anybody. Morning, caller. Morning, it's me again. Mm-hmm. Just one point here. When an individual is fatigued, overworked, you know what, what it does to their concentration level? Well, <clears throat> listen, <clears throat> <clears throat> this is what I'm just in here thinking. You can't function properly if you don't have adequate sleep. And that's what I was saying. There's certain jobs. Let me tell you something. I know a person who work at the airport who actually get up to leave their home four o'clock <clears> to <throat> walk to West Bay um, T-Junction, the gas station is. To get the transportation, to go to work at the airport mm-hmm. and leave after 11 in the night. How can that be? Mm-mm. Especially when heavy day like on the weekend, Friday, Saturday night. How how can that be? Yes. person leave in the home and, and to reach to come out the road after four? It means you have not before that time mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to prepare exactly. yourself. And if you're going to carry lunch, you will prepare something, mm-hmm. and you go there. And sometimes you 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 might talk to the person and say, "Have any lunch? No. Mm-hmm. So let me get let me get my lunch. And I buy a lunch meal. Sometime after eleven, that person goes going home. Wow. How can that person function as how they should function in a space where safety is is, is so important? Mm. Thank you, Colin. Have a good day. So, um, I mean, listen, the, the volume of messages that we're getting about how owners and managers are treating staff, <clears throat> I think, is extremely problematic. It doesn't take a scientist here today to see that there is a problem. And somebody needs to do something about it. I have always said this. I don't care whether it's construction company, whatever. Once you are a provider for government and you have a government contract, you have more of an obligation than just the average Jill out there running their business, which by law, the obligation should be the same. But government, hear me clearly, needs to pay attention to who they are giving contracts to. And if they're giving contracts to people who this morning we're hearing the uh, lots of people using the term slavery, modern day slavery, slave drivers, all this sort of stuff, right? To describe how they're operating, how they treat their staff. Government needs to pay attention. Maybe the reason they can outbid everybody else at such a low price that makes government want to jump on these contracts is because they're understaffed, they're undertrained, they're overworking their people. And like I said, you all are creating a recipe for disaster. Because one of these days, one of those security people is going to have enough of the mistreatment 
of working 16 hour days, right? Not getting any sleep, working all these different jobs for minimum wage, I'm pretty sure of that. And they're gonna, in collusion with somebody else, do something that compromises the safety at the airport. Before we get to that, can we have some minimum standards in place of how people in this country should be treated? There's a reason why some people can only take out work permits. Because no came man didn't get put up with that. They take a, a block and hit you upside your head. And, every, and people know that. That's why I keep telling you all. You have to pay attention in this country to the abuses that are happening to everybody, including the work permit holders. Good morning, caller. Morning, Sandy. It's Johan Moxham. How are you doing? Morning. How are you? Good. Calling in, in my capacity of being um, involved with the... Uh, as Airport Authority. I mm-hmm. uh, just wanted to um, address one thing that, that you read out. Um, there was a irresponsible comment that was made about the uh, contract for general aviation um, services already being awarded to um, FADS. Mm-hmm. Um, for the record, it's impossible to award a contract when the RFP hasn't been issued. So I understand people are um, emotional people like to gossip and, mm-hmm. and 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 share some sort of insight or rumor, but it's factually incorrect, and, mm-hmm. and so I felt it appropriate to mm-hmm. call it and say um, the contract can't be awarded if we haven't gone through the RFP process <clears throat> as yet. Where you accept it, so really and truly, just you. wanted to um, uh, correct that, but but also to say, given the fact that this is a pending. Uh, investigation. Some of the topics or some of the issues that are being raised this morning are outside of the remit of the Cayman Islands uh, Airport Authority. Um, so we won't be commenting um, anymore until the uh, end of the investigation. But if there are any issues uh, that persons feel appropriate, we direct them, as is your right, to the appropriate um, other government departments uh, and, and ministries. Um, but contractual and employment relations is not what we uh, do as the regulator, as the regulators uh, and, and, and providers of regulatory oversight of um, the airport. So I just wanted to leave that that and, and say that we won't be commenting anymore. We issued a statement at the outset, and that'll be um, all that is said by the Cayman Islands Airport Authority until the conclusion of the investigation. So I want to leave you there. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, thank you. Appreciate Take it. Care. Bye-bye. All right, folks, uh, 936-2626. Let's read some of the comments that have come in. So uh, Denver says someone needs to stop the slavery at the airport. Ms. Vernita says the carelessness in this country about people, lives, and safety is mind-blowing. Ms. Darlene Manzanares says overworked, underpaid, and disgruntled employees can't focus and perform um, to their best ability. The owner, boss, management for the entity is to blame for that. More or most of the times, they're the biggest bullies living on this beautiful earth. Miss Ann says, I hope they pay him. I hope they pay him. Not good. I wonder how many years he was working there. Jackie says, yes, Sandy. They need to get his statement and could suspend. But any lawyer would advise uh, keep this individual close to company. Even if uh, you have to pay attorney fees, keep them close. The lawyer will be the voice after the review. Insurance companies will tear apart everyone to put on blame. Hmm. Uh, Ms. Brenda says the employer needs to be hauled over the coals in this matter, not the individual. Airport authorities should take over this part of the airport security and safety. And remember, these people have clearance to be on the front line. Uh, Very pot, very pat, sorry, says there always needs to be an in-depth look at the security screening personnel. A lot are not trained properly. Uh, Ms. Brenda says disgruntled staff is a major disaster waiting to happen. So, exactly, says Siobhan. Uh, Pat says, who holds FAD accountable? Aviation department? Uh, Albert says, FADs, Frankie and Dara, slaves. Fax, says Siobhan. Fax, Miss Sandy. Gabby says, that's why the majority of their staff are permit holders, so they can abuse them and work them like dogs. Magdalene but these people need a job so they don't go to the Department of Labor. It's so sad. Rebel KY says, I bet you won't call Frankie Flowers. Oh, we'll take your bet and raise it five times. Somebody has a number for Frankie Flowers. We'll call him. 
Send me his number on WhatsApp right now. Miss Darlene says this is a reason that they hire work permit holders over locals because they can treat the work permit holders as they feel most of the time wicked treatment. Diana says, I really hope he gets a lawyer. So unfair if he don't work at the airport and they put him there. That's on them. Rebel says you only got strength for poor people. Oh, poor you, Rebel. Clearly, you don't listen to this program on a regular basis. Don't be silly. You clearly do not listen to this show on a regular basis. Uh, Pat says the staff at Crooked Square treated poorly as well, all permit holders. Magdalene says they've held that contract for years. Why does it not go <clears throat> to the bidding? Virch, uh, Ms. Vernita says if you all are uh, being treated badly, why won't you speak up or leave the job to get something better? Because unfortunately, um, that means that um, there's another 10 people who are desperate to come into this country waiting to get their work permit to take out for them. All right, let's give Mr. Frankie a call this morning. Thank you very much. Um, two, 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 two. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, let's continue reading. Magnum Opus. So Sandra, here's how the, this will play out. Flowers or build a gazebo or something as community service. And that will be that. Nothing will come of this. Don't wait for Kenneth to do anything. Hmm? What a hot mess. A gazebo. <laughs> <coughs> Lord Jesus. Dean Shillette. Good morning, Dean. <clears throat> All right. No answer. Hello? Hello? Service is temporarily not available. Please. Service not available? How do you go from service not available to that message? All right. Somebody says call Dara. She's taking over the business. So let's give Dara a call and see what's going on. Um, someone says uh, this should have been brought to light a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Um, what's going on with the quality of the line? Uh, Dean says some of these employers are untouchable, and in many cases, government themselves are the cooperates and co-conspirators. I did hear a story yesterday. I must tell you about a certain minister getting, it was either fifteen dollars or $20,000. My source wasn't sure. Donation from these very same people, allegedly. So it makes you wonder. There's the conflicts of interest that we often talk about. Um, nope. No answer there, honey chal. I got some chocolates to give away. <clears throat> Good morning, call. Oh. Good morning, caller. Good morning, Sandy. I love, it. I love <clears throat> your, your subject this morning. You know, it's it's unfortunate that um, that the fire this guy or whoever was driving the this mm -hmm. vehicle. But I remember when, from time I was that fire started, mm -hmm. they treated the staff. Frankly, especially mm. like the flowers. Mm. And I'm like, like so I don't know how I'm behind the bushes here. Mm -hmm. They treated the staff. I've had so many their staff tell me that they can't speak up because they're, they're, they have a work permit. Mm. Now, now something major happened like that. They're going to fire the man right away. And, all, and I take it and I say this with no, no, with no reservation at all, and no apologies. The the airport authority knew what was going on. Mm. They knew what was going on many years, and nothing was done. Now let's see what what is going to do. But this is probably be this is probably be a, a, a lawyer's dream to take this case on for that guy. That guy is it's it's sad. Mm -hmm. The first thing you want to do is fire the guy. Yeah, they did that already. Or lay him off. And then all of a sudden, 
you know, nothing happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it is sad. Mm-hmm. Thank but, you. But all the court, like I said, the, the airport authority knew that this was going on long time ago, putting unqualified people on the equipment. A lot of them didn't have any training. And then what happens? A major, it, it could have been a major disaster. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I'm waiting for somebody to call me too, so I, I, I don't care. I got to fix it. Thank you so much, caller. Let's try the main line oh. um, for fads to see if we can get anybody on the phone this morning. Uh, give me one second here. Um, do, 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 do. 949 number. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Um, I mean, all the comments here. My God, I'm quite surprised, really. Good morning, CL Flowers and Sons. How can I help? Hi, good morning. Trying to see if I can get a hold of Mr. Frankie Flowers Sr. or Miss Dara Flowers. This is Sandra Hill calling from the Cold Hard Truth this morning. Um, okay, so Miss Dara, she's currently off island. Okay. I'm sure exactly when she'll be back. Okay. And Mr. Frank, he's currently in a meeting. Um, mm-hmm. could I take a number? Gosh, these people and love to have to meetings. Them. I know, right? Tell me about it <laughs> every day, all day. <laughs> You're on radio, by the way. The number is 324-1612. This is the cold hard truth. Live on the radio. Oh three two, yes, 324-1612. When I said the cold hard truth, I figured you might have known, but I'm clarifying no, it for you. No, I, I'm, I'm not really sure. <laughs> okay. I'm not from here, so I'm not sure. Yes, uh-huh. Um, so ask Mr. Frankie to call me. We wanted to catch him on radio this morning, but sounds like that's not going to happen. But you can certainly um, have him call me directly. 324-1612. Sandra Hill. Right. Cayman right. Mall Road. Thank you, Thank you so right. much, my have dear. A have a beautiful day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Let's continue. Ms. Darlene says they're wicked and government responsible. Maybe certain people or persons in government that is given the contracts. Maybe they are getting a cut rub hand under the table deal in the pocket. Um, so um, she's she's off island, so she's not going to answer the phone. Strong Wilt says fads should give that contract to somebody else. Uh, they're too greedy. Hmm? Uh, Siobhan says they get people who they can pay dirt cheap and work like dogs and don't care who they are working, who they have working for them. Fire getting hot, says Leroy. Um, Leroy, you know where the fire is going to get hot as well? Your current employer, he might be up next if this foolishness continues. He better try and pay his staff. Um, Jackie says if this expat employee is fired, he has no job, potential, no income, and can't get leave to go home uh, till this is solved, it would be a long time. I, I wanted to ask you, Han, whether or not the, the report of the results of this investigation will be made public. So I'll check and get an answer for that. Rough C says, I still want to know why my comments are hidden from the public. Well, clearly they're not, if we can see this. It's not about being in my feelings. I would like to know why. Uh, Rough C's, we don't hide comments. So you better message Facebook if if there's any comments that are being hidden. Obviously, we saw that one. So um, you might want to check Facebook, though, because there are times that Facebook thinks that... Um, if you, I've seen this happen even with me just this last week. Facebook was telling me that they think I am, uh, what did they say? Spamming or something. And I have no idea why they thought that. I'm like, huh? So sometimes if you're putting in too many comments, they actually think it's a bot that's doing it, not a real person. So I don't know. I'm just saying uh, you need to talk to Facebook. That has nothing to do with us. So we can't answer the question because it ain't got nothing to do with us. Um... Gabby says, not much, uh, not much anybody can do if the workers themselves don't speak up. Uh, Siobhan says, nobody's untouchable. And I do want to speak to that point for sure. Um, uh, uh, okay. So, uh, um, hmm uh-huh. All right. So, yes, um, nobody is untouchable. 
Um, everybody should remember that. Like, seriously. Miss <sighs> Anne says, Miss Sandy, they know that you're calling, so they're not going to answer. I know they all go into meetings. The second we try to call them, oh, let's have a meeting. You know they just don't want to answer the phone. Nobody's having no meeting every time I call them. Mm-mm. Um, well, who don't know about CMR, so Siobhan? Never, ex- next excuse is that in the bathroom taking a crap, says Leroy. Lord have mercy. Not from here. What's new, says Brenda. <laughs> oh, boy. He pays us, but no fuel. Uh-huh. I soon come. I soon come, Leroy. You sit there. He's paying you, but others have not been paid, and those complaints have gone to labor, and labor taking people to court. You sit there. Uh, Cameron says, I would run into a meeting too if the cold hard truth was calling me. <laughs> Darlene says, the local is not even good enough to be a receptionist. Simple as answering phone calls. What a hot mess we're in. Jamila says, pay you what you pay you what you work, but if it's closing at 12 p.m., there is no pay. Ooh, honey, chill. Listen, we got some goodies to give away this morning, 936-2626. It is... Easter, or not Easter, good, what is it? Uh, oh, good grief. What is tomorrow again? Tomorrow's Ash Wednesday. My goodness, Easter soon come. And so my favorite chocolates, one of my favorite chocolates by far, Ferrero Rocher. It is so delicious. Have you guys had the Ferrero Rocher cake and ice cream? And oh, you can make these like, oh my God, they're so good. You can take them and melt them down and then make desserts. Mm, put them in those brownies. You know what? I think I'm going to do that with my next brownie recipe. I'll mix some of this in. Oh, my God. To die for. Call me now. 936-2626. I don't even have a question for you. Just call me so I can give away some chocolate. And because tomorrow is also Valentine's Day. Hello. We got the Valentine's Day shaped collection of Ferrer Rocher. Look at that one. So cute. You can give this to your little honey bunches. All right, 936. There we go, honey chill. Good morning, honey chill. How you doing? Good morning. You're a winner just because. (laughs) Just because I like that. Thank you. (laughs) Hold on now. Let me let me write down. Let me write it down. Put down your number. Would you like the um the heart-shaped one or um or the regular one? Which one has more in it? Because I have to share it with my daughter. Oh my god, then you want to go with the regular one. Right, for I'll sure. The okay, good, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. All right. Good morning, caller. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Uh, would you like the heart shaped one or a regular chocolate one? Uh, either one will do. Either one will do? Yes. Okay. All right. Hold on now. Let me take down your number. Hold on one second. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, congratulations. You're a winner. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning. Uh Uh-oh. Good morning, caller. Hi. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. You've just won yourself some chocolate. How does that feel? Great. It feels great. (laughs) Who doesn't like chocolate? Mm -hmm. I mean, who doesn't like chocolate? I know. All right, I've taken down your number. And uh, (laughs) we'll, we'll, we'll get you some chocolate today, okay? Respect, respect, and understand. You're most welcome. All right, we got lots of people looking for some yummy chocolate today. Good morning, caller. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Good. Hi, I'm calling for the chocolate. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning. All right, let me see now. I gotta make sure I got enough to go around. Yes, you got yourself some chocolate, honey jam. Yeah. All right. Happy Valentine's Day and Ash Wednesday when it comes. All right, making sure I'm getting all these numbers down. Hopefully I got that one, I think. Uh, Good morning, caller. Good morning. So they are my wife's favorite chocolates. So I'm just in line waiting. Oh, my gosh. Of course. (laughs) We got to make sure we cook her up. Now, um, okay, let me hold on now. Let me take down your number. Um, Okay, good. We got you. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. No problem. You got me? Yes, sir. 
All right. And it's Juliet Rankin, by the way. Oh, tell her happy, happy chocolate eating from me. Uh, no problem. <laughs> okay, my dear. Very uh, good. All right. Uh-oh. Let me see now. Oh, gosh, the phones are... Oh, that's somebody called me from this other phone. I was like, why don't I see that on the phone? Hello, caller. Good morning. Good morning. That was the other number that was calling. How are you? I'm fine. Would you like some chocolates too? Why Thank not? You. Yes? Beautiful. Um, Hold on now. Let me put you down. We're going to give away a lot of chocolate. I think I'm going to have to go to the store and buy some more. But happy, um, happy, uh, uh, tomorrow is what? Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, okay. All right, dear. Okay. Got another call. Good morning, caller. Oh, you called before, yes? Good morning. Hi. I got you on my list already. Okay. Okay, good, <laughs> good. You. All right, dear. All right, let me see who else is calling me. Oh, somebody's calling my number. Oh, hold on. That's coming in on the WhatsApp. Why am I not why am I not seeing it? That's so weird. Good morning, caller. Good morning. Hello, Happy darling. Chocolate. You'd like some chocolate? Sure. Oh. Why not? All, all y'all can be fat, but as long as you don't blame me for it, we'll be okay. <laughs> no, we won't. No, I won't. Okay, honey. I put you down on the list. Who else wants some chocolate this morning? Okay, hold thank on. you. Hold on, hold on. Good morning, caller. Okay. Hey, good morning, Sandy. Huh? I need some chocolate for my husband. You need, you need some chocolate for your hubby? Yeah. Okay. Oh, listen, we also have um we also have this one. This is the the Lind, I think that's how it's pronounced, assorted chocolates. So this one has like all the different flavors and stuff in it. This has like five different ones. This looks pretty good too. All right. So what we'll give you I don't know brand there yet. We'll give this one to you for a hubby. Um, so he can enjoy 18 assorted chocolates in that one. Yes. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, darling. Who else wants chocolates? I feel like Oprah this morning. You get a chocolate. And you get a chocolate. I want chocolate for my grandchildren. I want chocolate. I'll give you the phone number. I got it. Don't worry. You get chocolate. And you I need get some chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> I need, I need to some go chocolate to my grandson. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I got more than one person on the line. Hold on a second, honey. Chow, who is this other person talking to? I guess so, because I'm hearing voices. <laughs> All right, 923, I got you. No problem. Nine, me, two, yeah, three, okay, thank you. Nine, three, three. Wait a minute. Oh. Not 0910? No, that's a different number. Hold that's on. That's me. That's you. That's me. Okay, what's the that's other number? Me. 923. <laughs> What was it? Nine two three. I'm on the next scene, scene. I want I'm you to go to my grandson. Oh, okay. What's the number of your grandson? Three two five. Three, no, I'm sorry. Three two three five nine three three. Call that number. They will three, pick it up. Three two three <laughs> five, five nine, nine three, three. three three. Okay. Yeah, please. Thank right. you very much. No problem, yeah. honey. Chill. Who else wants chocolate okay. today? Thank you. Okay, Thank love. you both, ladies. Bye-bye. I had Bye. two people on the same line. I was a little bit confused. Um, I was confused. I'm like, who, who else is talking on the line? Uh-oh. Hello. Good morning, caller. Uh-oh. Oh. Call on the WhatsApp. Oh, my goodness. Too many. Hello, caller. Good morning, Sandy. Yes, I would like a chocolate. Oh, yeah. Good morning. Hello. That that name that voice sounds familiar. Uh, well, I can't I, I can't be responsible for the nuts now. I'm sure they probably have nuts in them. So if you have a nut allergy, you probably shouldn't eat them. All right, my dear. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Siobhan says, Sandy must have cleaned up Foster's. Well, apparently I'm going to have to go back and get some more chocolates. I might have to ask Foster's for a little chocolate discount here today. All right. Anybody else? In for a penny, in for a pound. That could be today's motto. <laughs> get your chocolates, one and all. Oh, my gosh. So, Cass says that Lynn, Lynn chocolates with strawberry filling are so good. Ooh, dude, this one has that. Let me see. This one has... 
Oh, Lord, I can't even properly see this now. Milk chocolate truffle. Oh, that I love truffle. That one sounds good. Milk chocolate oh, cappuccino heart with natural flavor. White chocolate truffle. Mm. Extra dark. This one says extra dark chocolate truffle and dark chocolate heart. So I don't see any strawberries in that one. Hello. Good morning, caller. Good morning, Sandra. How are you? Uh oh. Oh, shoot. I think I hung up on him. Yikes. Hold on. Hello, caller. Can you hear me? Oh, resume. Oh, Lord. These phones so fancy. Morning, caller. Morning. Would you like some chocolate? Yes, ma'am. Okay. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All You're right. welcome. Oh, they call him my other phone now. Oh, uh, morning caller. Hello. Hello. Good Hi. Morning. morning there. How are you? Not too bad. I'm very bad. Can I have the earphones? <laughs> uh, yes, you may actually. No chocolate for you is right. Um. Uh, yes, courtesy of uh, Cellular World, you can definitely have the headsets. Okay, thank you. Very good. Okay, thanks very much. He knows his he knows his limits. Good morning, caller. Are you still on? Yes, still on air. Giving out chocolates. Would you like some chocolates or brownies? Do I look like I need any chocolates? Do you? you don't need either one, but you still be eating my brownies. So would you like some brownies tomorrow? <laughs> I can hook you up. All right. Thank you, caller. <laughs> ah, calling, calling low key for that for them brownies. Now you know, don't y'all make that man fool you. He loved them brownies. Uh Cameron, Siobhan says, "How many phones you got going?" Yeah, child, too many. Because I'll be forgetting which phone is ringing. Good morning, Miss Susan. I was trying to call you to get some of that nice delicious chocolate that you're giving away. Um, send me a message. Rough seas. Uh, says, I think you hit something by accident on your end because it used to show up before, but now it only comes up on your screen, but not on the public side. Nope. I ain't got no control over that, honey chill. I ain't got no control over that. We don't control comments in that way. Janet wants some chocolate. Hello, Miss Janet. Hold on one second now, honey chill. All right. Mm -hmm. Six, five, two, nine. All right. Leroy says you better buy a case. I'm, I'm going to have to call on. I'm going to have to call Miss Mary um, over at Price Right and say like, hey, can you hook me up with some chocolate this morning? I need some more. I'm going to message her right now. Good morning. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me see who else we got. Who else we got here? Um, Strong Wilt. Happy Valentine's Day. Yes, tomorrow we won't be on air. Um, how about if I send you a Bermuda rum cake instead? Oh, honey child, you trying to compete with Tortuga with their rum cakes? Or what? I challenge you to rum cake competition because, boy, the Tortuga chocolate one be off the chain good. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, Soka loves dark chocolate. Phone central, do ya? Says Siobhan. Good morning, Miss Ethel. Cameron says, Sandy must have a work permit for Willy Wonka. Jamila wants brown is. Aw. Jamila, I will make you some brownies for tomorrow. Okay? Don't you worry. You're pregnant, so you deserve brownies. I'll make you some. All right, folks. Anybody on Instagram? I know the Instagram people over there just watching. They're like, what the hell? How we don't get included in this? And do y'all want some brownies? There's some chocolate Instagram folks. Let me know. All right, folks. Happy, happy uh, Ash Wednesday. Please be safe tomorrow. You know, you guys know the drill. Um, it's the the annual agricultural show. Big shout out, by the way, to Taste of Cayman. They're back. It's, it went by so quickly. Can you believe they're coming up again? I'm so excited. They're going to come on the show on Monday. We got some guests coming on Thursday from the Alex Panton Foundation. We have guests coming. What else? Hold on now. Mm. 
Let me just check my messages. But we're going to have some guests coming on this uh, week. So make sure that you um, tune in. So, yes, I'm super excited. So, um, by the way, they're going to be announcing a surprise when they come on on Monday, Tasty came out. They got a little surprise for us. So I'm interested to hear. They've changed up some stuff because last year, remember now, was a little bit of a nightmare. Uh, but save the date. It's April the 13th, uh, Saturday, April the 13th. That's going to be Taste of Cayman this year. Uh, expected to be bigger and better. Restaurants have had lots of notice. So if you want to participate, remember now you have to be a CETA member and they do have requirements in place. So make sure that you find out what those requirements are. Miss Anne would like some chocolate as well. Yes, Miss Anne, let me take down your number. Listen, it's the one time of year that you don't need an excuse to eat chocolate because it's Valentine's Day. It's all about chocolate. Mm. So um, let me just have a look now. Yes, so we got all kind of good chocolate, Ferrero Rocher. We've got some chocolate hearts. So congratulations to all of the winners today. Eat chocolate and be merry. Um, how are we getting these items? So I have your numbers. Yes, thank you, Bravon. Very logical question. Here's what I'm going to do. I think I have a meeting at, hold on now. Let me check my meeting schedule. I believe I have a meeting at 2.30. I also have to go and get some gift cards um, for some families in need. So I'm going to try to run Foster's this morning. Quick time, do that. So what I will do is I will gather everything up as quickly as I can, looking at the time, and I will drop them off by DMS Broadcasting this afternoon. Okay, so give me until like midday to make sure I get all the chocolates and I got I got all the numbers written down, make sure I got enough chocolates. So I will drop everything off by DMS Broadcasting. Thank you, Bavon, for the question. So remember, folks, DMS Broadcasting is located right on Sound Road, right next to the car wash place and up the street from um, the BMW dealership. Yeah, so before you get to Eastern Avenue, they're like on that strip of, of Sound Road. All right, y'all have a, oh, Richard, hold on. One more coming in. Um, to do Richard's number. All right. So when you go there, you just give your number because most of you have just taken down numbers and not names. Just give them your number for collection of uh, the chocolate. So construction appreciation day is February the 16th. Oh, next to mango tree. Nice. All right. So the other thing um, is... I want to ensure that all of you, again, uh, thanks to the Honorable Kenneth Bryan, who called in earlier, uh, please go out and support Miss Martin. It's not often that one of her own is being acknowledged and recognized in such an amazing way. So I invite all of you, I'm going to post it up on social media just to remind you to please go out to this event this evening. Again, they're going to be renaming the Georgetown um, Primary School to um, from Georgetown Primary to um, the Marie Martin um, School Ministry. So I'm going to post this up. Go out 4.30 sharp. Get there early, Caymanians. Don't be late. Um, get there early. And, um, you know, parking, you got to find parking and all that kind of stuff. So give yourself sufficient time in order to be able to do that. So um, congratulations to her. Uh, and, um, yes, well, well-deserved, uh, everybody has said that this is an amazing achievement that is definitely well-deserved. Okay, honey chill. Mm -hmm. So this is the official renaming ceremony today of the Georgetown Primary School in honor of the retired principal, Miss Marie Martin, today at 4.30 at the school hall. Um... I don't know why this, um, I'm going to, oh, there it is. I'm going to share this again uh, to encourage all of you to go out. All right. Be on time, honey child. Be early. Okay. So I will, um, yes, you can be there. Go on out, Miss Anne. Everybody go out. Like I said, it's not often now that we get to celebrate each other. So um, make it your, make it your mission to do just that, to go out and celebrate this wonderful um, achievement. Okay, beautiful folks. That's all she wrote. You guys, uh, thank you so much for tuning in this morning. Enjoy your day off tomorrow. 
Uh, be safe, like I said, on the roadways, of course. And um, we will see you Thursday morning at 7.30, bright and early. Okay. Very, very good. All righty. Yes, congratulations to Miss Marie. And thank you, Miss Ethel, for the Valentine's Day messages. All right, honey chow. Y'all be good now. Have a beautiful, super productive day. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Cold Hard Truth on Bobo 89.1 FM. Cayman's number one talk show is live weekdays from 7.30 a.m. Never miss an episode again. Watch anytime on CMR's Facebook and YouTube channels for the latest show episodes. Don't forget to follow us online on our social media channels and visit CaymanMarlRoad.com for all the latest news and community happenings.